Woo! Welcome in on a Friday, Friday, everybody. Ben and Woods, 97.3. The fan, great to be here with you this morning. Uh, we have a lot to get to today. A lot. One of our favorite days of the year, bar none, is our celebration of St. Patrick's Day. Now, I was telling Paulie driving it, I said, three, four years ago, we would have had a full <laughs> Irish playlist, the whole bit. And I said, at this point, you know, we've done it. Just kind of going through the motions, if I'm being completely honest. I'm sitting here dreading. <laughs> Oh, what was that? Dropkick Murphys? Oh, cool. Very good. Oh, you too. Very cool. Oh, Fontaine's <laughs> DC. Right on. Okay. I mean, you may hear some that, that comes up anyway, but we're not as, uh, we don't do things like that as much anymore. I think I feel like we've evolved. Uh, that's not going to count, by the way, Ben. I'll get to you in a second. I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle. He's our executive producer. Good morning, Paulie. Good morning. Uh, interesting morning. I think I just broke my headphones. I saw when you put them on, I heard a snap. Like... I think oh, the plastic, the plastic, bro. Uh, or whatever, around the band that goes over my head <laughs> broke. It's not. It doesn't make for a good feeling right before you start a show. No, literally, like thirty seconds before we hit the air, yeah, like five and seconds. I put my headphones and on. <laughs> oh, is one loose? They're both. Do you have a backup pair? There's um, probably some I around some here. here. Yeah, yeah, there's some there. Uh, Paulie is our... Uh, Sorry, babe. I'm going to be going to Best Buy after the show. Yeah. <laughs> executive di- executive producer and our imaging director. He's got a... You should see the load that has been put on Paulie's plate to get ready for the baseball season. It is something to behold. Enjoy your weekend, uh, Paulie, by the way. What weekend? <laughs> Benjamin Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor, joins us as well. And uh, moderator supreme... Absolutely knocked it out of the park yesterday. Great job. Thank you. We had a good um, round table yesterday. We did. We'll get to the round table. I want to pinch you first because you forgot to wear green. I did. It's technically not oh, St. Patrick's his ass. Day. Where should I get him? His behind nipples. The, behind? Do you go behind here? Like, oh! That's, a... <laughs> That's the worst spot to get pinched. That is a bad spot. Like right, right behind. I was giving you my fleshy rear Your backside rear. was going to be probably it's a better the, spot. It's the it's like the tricep. Yeah, like, ugh, gets you every time. Now, Paulie has a mint green shirt on. That will that will pass. Ah, that's going to pass. It's sketchy. But it's mint green. Better than me. I, I will give him that. I went double layer. Green shoes. Oh, green shoes. There you go. He's fine. Man. Yeah, I went double layer in case I take. Then the why sweatshirt didn't you just off. give me the sweatshirt? I'll put it on. We <laughs> no. can all be in green. <laughs> no. Wanted to uh, pinch you. Yeah, I get up. You've and had I, an extra pair of gloves this whole time. I get up and I look at my calendar. Friday, March fifteenth. It just you know I'm not thinking about it because technically well, we, we said it yesterday. We did We're say it on the show yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have put a reminder in my phone, but then I thought it's not St. Patrick's Day yet. It's Sunday, but we we talked about it yesterday. You're right. I've been pinched. You have been pinched, and uh, man, yeah, you got to play along. You got to play along with the the St. Patty's Day bit. We will play our favorite piece of audio. Oh. Definitely, I mean, definitely, it's definitely in our top three. The uh, the leprechaun siding in Mobile, Alabama. We will get to that. What time are we doing the uh, leprechaun? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Perfect, perfect, perfect time for that. We did have the uh, the first official ninety four nine ninety seven three. Sorry, roundtable uh, yesterday. I don't know why I had ninety four nine. Did on you the just brand. mess up the <laughs> the number of our the radio station? I mean, I that's mm. my bit. We did have our first. Uh, 97.3 The Fan Roundtable yesterday, sponsored by Roundtable Pizza. Uh, they came in, and I thought it went very smoothly. And to be honest, it went pretty quick. I was pretty tired after the four-hour show, but we had the other thing. Ben, you moderated the hell out of that thing. You really did a great job. And I thought Annie did a great job. I thought Craig did a great job. I The only thing I'm worried about is when, at some point, there's going to be way more cooks in this kitchen. If Ello is here and Tony Gwynn's here, like, it's going. There's going to be a lot like, of people. It was pretty full yesterday. It was very full. How do yesterday. we add two more? I don't know. I don't know if we have the microphones for it. I'm happy to bow out every other week or whatever <laughs> if somebody wants to slide. We might in. need to actually like rotate. We might little vacations. Now I think Sammy was a special edition. He was because we didn't have both Ello and Tony Gwynn Jr. So that's one. Maybe we have one other rotating cast member that that drops out because having more than we had yesterday it's gonna be tough. Would be tough. Now I'll agree with you. I thought it went very well. I will disagree with you in that when you said it went really quick, I kept looking at the clock with no being the moderator. Yeah. With no commercials, I go okay. We must be about forty minutes in. It's ten twelve. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have used all my questions. Let's start coming up with more. All right, we're wrapping up. It's ten twenty four. Huh? We still have thirty 
six minutes to go here. It did not feel like it went particularly fast from my perspective. I thought it was uh, it was fun. It's always nice to see the you know your colleagues. You don't really you kind of see them in passing every day, but it was good and people really enjoyed it. Um, you know, which I, I I knew they would. The only thing about the entire bit that concerned me was something that was put in the chat by our now our boss is Adam Klug, and you guys know we just pelt him. Every single day, at every every turn, just every single day, everything ninety six to the ribs. Everything he does, we don't literally pelt him with eggs. We would if we could, <laughs> but we don't. But we would if we What's could. Mean? It's a pretty decent idea. For <laughs> Start at, throwing at, eggs at, at him at some point. I told I want to throw something at him at some point. Put him on some sort of wheel, spin him around, and I I wanted to throw ham at him. At the uh, Christmas throw, and holiday, throw slices extreme. of cheese at him. That's they, been they've done, done that here in the studio. The old host, Ben's chair, right there. The Ben's chair. There's a picture of the old host lean back with slices of American cheese on his face. We were at the other station and we saw that. And we went, "Wow, that was a viral trend at some point." Cheese <laughs> facing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, really cool. <laughs> Something tells me though, if we had done it, it would have been hysterical. I don't know why we were. We always think that about ourselves, but um, so something concerned me in the chat, and it wasn't from Adam Klug. It was from his boss, our big boss, Michael Valenzuela, who was up and listening, guaranteed. Now, we don't pelt him nearly as much. It's not smart business to go after the- Maybe. He's, a, he's like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, tier one. On Friday, I'm not sure if he's listening today. We'll find out in a, in a second. Yeah, let sure. us know if he's in the chat. Yeah, he will. He's very active in the chat as well. He's a great dude. He is a great, great guy. I really do like Michael a lot. And I love Adam. I do. I, we're just, this is just how we roll. So yesterday, Adam came in and he said, hey, I got all of you guys brand, brand new 97.3, the fan polos. And they're brown, and they have the yellow logo. And I love our logo. I think we have a fantastic radio logo. You know, it's not it's not any different from any other station you'll see, but I like it. It's good, and it's got the brown and yellow. And um, so he drops off the polo. So I thought, hey, this is a great bit to put it on for the round table. What in the F are you doing right now? What are you doing? I'm trying to show our logo. It's there. Everyone can see it. No Everyone one knows see what our it. logo looks like. I know, like. but I'm just letting people see it on the YouTube stream. Freaking street. me out, man. So <laughs> just, just focus. I'm trying. I'm trying to, but I got a guy who messed me doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I put the thing on. Look, it's it's no offense, no offense. I'm not a logoed polo guy. Never have been. Never will be. I'll wear a collared shirt when I play golf. That's it. It's part of the reason I work now, in radio. I will say, these of the two different types of polos we have received oh. in our five years here at yeah. 97 Through the Fan. These are the best these ones. These are by far the best ones. Well, because they're brown and yellow. They have the accurate logo right. on. The last ones we got, I think I got a red one. I think... You got a blue like one, a weird, and he like, got a gray one. Yeah, I got a gray one. Mine was like shark skin blue. Even <laughs> the station's old colors were just Padres blue and white. Right. And yet, I'm like, why do I have a red, a red polo? shirt? So he drops them off. So I, I, I think to myself, this is going to be. A good and they're bit. Nike. I'm, yeah, I'm going to put it on, and I'm going to wear it for the round table. And people were laughing. They're like, "This is great, Woodsy." I'm like, "Yeah, you know me. I'm happy to be here, Mr. Corporate." <clears throat> so he says in the chat, "Wait till you hear." Woodsy, that I'm going to make these mandatory. And I went, ha, 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 ha. Then I quit. And so I... <laughs> mandatory like, like every time we're on the air? Or... Like it's our uniform? That's what I thought he was saying. Okay. So I had a phone call with him after. I mean, he's got a military background. They're he, big he, on uniformity he, in the military. I do, oh, I crap, do see I that. A hundred percent. He is like, he's very <laughs> diligent and military-esque. He doesn't run this place like a no, no, you know, no. but that's his like it makes sense in his head. So I go ha 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 ha. Then I quit. So I had a phone call with him later about a meeting uh, for a potential endorser, and I had a couple questions for him. So I was running those by him, and he drops this on me at the end. Hey, I wasn't kidding about the uh, polo, and I go ha ha ha. He goes, no, no, I wasn't, I wasn't kidding. He goes, I want when you guys go out places like next Wednesday morning. Yeah, to. Seven Mile Casino. He goes, I, I want you guys in the, the polos. And I go, I can't do that. I said, I, no, no. And he goes, oh, yeah. Michael, I love you. And I said, I go, please no. And he's like, you got to rep the brand. I was like, well, that, 
I mean, I'm repping the brand by being there, and we're at the table, and there's a big table. People know where they're coming. They don't walk in and go, is this Kixie? <laughs> like, they, they know who they're – the the logoed polo isn't going to make much difference. There might be some people who are just random passersby, though, who could learn about our station and – See the logo and want to the banner. Hey, I'm going to go to that, all the banners. I'm going to go to the website and see what that's all about. Hey, that guy who's really funny and entertaining, he's wearing some sort of logoed shirt. I'm going to check out what that logoed shirt means on the internet. So I, I told him, I said, I'm begging you not to do this. I said, number one, I it's not my style. And I said, Paulie's going to pitch a fit. Paulie is a clo- oh, yeah. clothes horse. He has a style that he wears. You cannot force him to wear a logo 97.3, the fan thing. Not, ha- not happening. Now, luckily for us, we have Ben Higgins. We have a solution. <laughs> we and have his a- name. <laughs> I'd like to float this one to you, Michael. As long as somebody is in one, are you cool with that? Because I have a guy I would like to offer as tribute. Like, quite frankly, I'm surprised he's not wearing it today. That's just, true. A free, just because. Well, free shirt. I only have one, so I need to save it for a special <laughs> occasion. Now, if you give me seven of them, I've got seven I've got seven outfits now, one for every day of the week. I love that he calls it an outfit. <laughs> I already it's a buy my golf polo. I already buy my polos at Costco because they're, you know, seven dollars and ninety nine cents. This oh, one God. was free. That's even better. That's eight dollars better than my normal polo. So, yeah, if you want to stock me with free polos, happy to wear the brand anywhere you want. Isn't it funny, though, because, like, I honestly feel that if I was in a polo at a remote doing a show, I wouldn't have as good of a show. I would be like this. I'd be sulking. (laughs) I'd be embarrassed. Okay, perfect example. When I did the commercial, the TV commercial for Sedano 4 that runs. You're scarred by this. That runs. It runs every Three minutes on the minute, <laughs> and it has for the since the year that I've, I've shot it. I'm Woodsy from 97.3 The yeah, Fan. Yeah, we know, because you have a giant And I love local. And we have a 97.3 <laughs> The Fan shirt on. I showed up to the shoot, and I told you guys, everyone else is putting on, like, Boy Toy Jesse's like, hey, what's up? It's Boy Toy Jesse. He's looking all fresh. Emily from Rock 105 <laughs> is looking good. Uh, DJ Rock is looking like all he wears. And there's me in a skin tight 97 through the band with three inch sleeve and my white skinny arms. And I'm like, welcome to Sedano Ford. I'm so mortified every time it comes on. I go, you can't. I'm begging you not to make me wear this. I'm begging you. And here's what it comes down to. This could be make or break for me. I don't I don't know that I can acquiesce on this demand. I really don't. I put it on yesterday for the thing. I was looking at myself in the camera, and I, all I could think the whole time was, you look disgusting. You look hideous. You look disgusting. You look like a nerd. You're a nerd, too. And I, I said, I will wear it every round table. You're now, a nerd, too. Ben will be our collared shirt representative at every event. He will have no problem. I'm begging you to just let me be me. And we'll see what he says. He's not in the chat this morning. I hope he's enjoying his morning sleeping in. Uh, but I just said, I couldn't believe he was serious. I could not believe he was, he was like, oh, no. I'm trying to find a picture of you from I'm, that commercial. Please don't find a picture of me in that commercial. Everybody that knows what so I look hard. like. I look like a moron. I, I just don't think it's <laughs> – I, I get why you don't want to do it. It's very not Woods' style. But I also understand Michael's perspective and why it's something that most – managers, people in charge of a brand would want to see the the logo as much as possible. Can I offer a solution? Can we have like our guy Michael Shin or Paulie or somebody do like a really cool 973 the fan shirt? I'd wear that. I think the polo is fine. I just don't want to wear it. I want to wear it look what good I like on me, to wear. Man. It does not look good on me. Somebody said in the chat Kurt says Wood looks, Woods looks very uncomfortable in that polo. It doesn't <laughs> look good on me. And if I look good, it's what they say about in sports. If you you look look good, good, you you feel feel good. good. If you feel good, you play good. And I feel like my performance will suffer if you force me to be in public on a remote in that collared shirt. Now, I know, listen, you choose your battles. But I will flip that and say, Michael, also choose your battles. I don't know that you can force me to wear a shirt. 
Yeah, we can take this all the way to the Supreme I, Court. I, and I will. And I will. If there are any attorneys Woods out there. Woods v. Odyssey. <laughs> oral arguments set for June 17th before the uh, the panel of Supreme Court. Your Honor, as evidence, I'd like to present this effing commercial. Okay? Enough said. The defense rests. Look Can an employer require their employee to wear a shirt that they don't like? Look at me. Uh, Coleslaw says to those of you that have never to those that have never watched the YouTube stream, how would they know who is who? I think you need names on your shirts. Coleslaw, I will come to your house and I will take you out right now. All right. So I, Hi, uh, I'm Woods. Yeah, right on my shirt. <laughs> so man, it was uh, it was funny. Now he's I again. I hope he's just busted my balls a little bit about it because I really like it. If you see me. Next week at Seven Mile for the viewing party, and I'm in a polo shirt. You know I've lost the bit. Did you put it up there? Yes, it's up there, and it's and it's frozen at the My moment face, where, where I'm like, "Kill me!" Where Kill your me. soul has just left your body on television in the middle of a commercial. My face, just, I can't even hide it, dude. If, this is literally this is a television part commercial. of the 30 seconds they pulled from a television commercial, and Woods looks like he would like to be anywhere else but in this television commercial at this moment. If you could read my mind at that point. Least enthusiastic television commercial participant of all time. If you read my mind, it just says mother effort. That's all it says. It it could be a hostage video. Woods, blink twice if you're okay. Is Manny Sedan holding you hostage? When I see the commercial, I run into the next room. I'm like, no, 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 no. But to be Fair, like there's Jesse's wearing a nice shirt. Yeah, everyone looks good. Style. Yes, everyone got to be themselves. I had to be Sport Boy 97.3 the fan. Uh, and I mean, I I know it airs at least seven times a night on Channel Ten at least because I'm at work. It's always wait, coming on my television. I need you to just record that 30 second spot next oh, I time you see it. All right, I will I will do that. I have the the, might, the recording running. Should be fine. I hated it. I All right, hate we, it. Let's, Don't do this to us, Michael. Please. Let's uh, Please. let's get running. Dang. We will uh, we will hand out the menus for what we've got on a Friday <laughs> show today, including our St. Patrick's Day celebration. Uh we also have a a big uh, you send it out on social media, but a big congratulations to go out to one of our favorites as well. That is all coming up next. Let's get started here. Kelly's got some traffic. It is Friday. We are off and running going until 10 o'clock this morning with Men and Woods. Thank you for joining us, uh, making us part of your day here on 97.3. The fan will be right back.
All right, for you time zone aficionados, uh, the Padres traveling party is uh, tucking in for the night. Tonight, Friday, in Seoul, South Korea, just saw Don Orsillo uh, tweeting, darkness falling and uh, time to go to bed in Korea. So they've already wrapped up their day, their first kind of full day in Korea after landing uh, this morning our time, which was uh, a long time ago. Or yesterday morning, our time. So 24 hours ago, they've pretty much been I've, in Korea now. It's almost like they planned it out where it worked out pretty well. They What did they get in at, like 2, 3 in the morning? Yeah. I have given up entirely on trying to figure out what day and time it is in, in Korea. Yeah, right now it's Friday at 10.26 p.m. So they're settling likely into their hotels. Maybe there's some night owls who are still up, but uh, a lot like of them. 16 hours ahead? Six, uh, 14 hours ahead, 14 hours I believe. Ahead. I'm not really good at math. 14 hours ahead and. Uh, no, 16. 16. 16 hours ahead? I just checked. 12 10. hours would be 626. I hate this bit. This is what and we talked we about. Four more hours to get to 1026. No, you're right. 16 hours. 16 hours ahead. This is All the right. bit it we is talked 10, about yesterday though. with the inner monologue that just spills out. He doesn't have one. Oh, he doesn't, maybe you don't have one. Maybe I don't. This is your inner monologue. Here it is. Here it is. For everyone to hear. Uh, Want to congratulate, though. Didn't uh, I saw this yesterday via the Ben and Woods Twitter account was the first place <laughs> that I saw it. But uh, our good friend, former Padre, Brian O'Grady, uh, and his wife gave birth yesterday. After uh, he didn't, his wife did. Well, his wife, yes, yeah. his <laughs> wife did. Uh, what was the uh, what was the name of the little one? Jagger Patrick O'Grady. I mean, Jagger Patrick, so, amazing. JP O'Grady. So I texted him yesterday. I saw uh, his wife Delaney had posted. They're so happy. Their little girl is <laughs> it's so cute, standing in the hospital waiting for her baby brother. And uh, so I texted BOG yesterday, and I just said, man, congratulations, dude. Uh, he's, got a, he's got a little boy now. I said, uh, little dude couldn't have waited three more days until St. Patty's Day. Just make it, like, <laughs> the best bit of all time. He goes, thank you. So amazing. I know. We thought he was going to, too. His middle name is Patrick. I said, that's so rad. And he said, how you guys doing? I said, never better. He said, uh, your boy's good. I said, boys are getting big, little Gs. He goes, they sure look like it. He's just the best guy, man. And I just, it's one of those guys, I went into the kitchen and I told Hannah, I go, why can't he make $30 million a year? Like, that? if I've ever met someone in this game of baseball that we've been covering for a long time, Brian O'Grady should be the guy that makes the big money. He's just, he just gets it. He's just as cool as can be. And I'm really happy for him and his wife. Um, the little, the little, their family's going to be so beautiful. So beautiful. So warmest congratulations. Three days before St. Patty's, it's still a pretty good bit as we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day today here on the Ben and Woods program. Not bad. So it was um, how many years ago? Maybe that'll be throwback Thursday next week. Our <laughs> Brian, our first Brian O'Grady yeah. interview came on St. Patrick's That's right. Day. That's right. I want to say, was it four years ago? Yeah, probably four or five uh, years when ago. When we first, uh, first got him on the air after a lot of anticipation when the Padres signed him. Yeah. It was 2021. 21. Three yeah. years ago that we had Brian O'Grady on. And, uh, yeah, um, you know, it would be nice to see if he could he land somewhere exciting. He's been putting in a lot of work. You see all the, all the videos and stuff. But it's tough sport, no it doubt is, about man. it. It's tough sport, it especially really on is. the professional level. All right, uh, here's what we've got coming up on the show this morning. Uh, obviously, I was uh, locked into yesterday's Mountain West quarterfinal, Ooh. San Diego State. <laughs> And UNLV, just another roller coaster ride for the Aztecs, and they they somehow pulled out that win, seventy four seventy one over the Rebels, advancing to today's semifinals. Got some thoughts on the game coming up. We'll also talk about the Padres in Korea. They have just released, at least I just saw it for the first time, the official thirty one person traveling roster. After they got on a plane, and we still didn't know exactly who is there. I, there is one surprise for me. On the plane, and I will share who that is coming up. I think we have the same one uh, on uh, the program in a little bit. We will have our regular features. Take on Woods. It's a Friday. Uh, don't do this as well. The tournament of drops continuing. We will wrap up our first round and start our second round. The Sweet 16 of the tournament of drops. We'll narrow down the field 50 percent after the first four days. Give you the results of the last first round region and start into the. Round of 16 and get down to the quarterfinals uh, by the start of next week. So looking forward to that. Then second half of the show, our Tier 1 tour continues. Of course, we'll do our uh, famous St. Patrick's Day news report that we give you every year. Uh, since uh, St. Patty's Day is coming up on Sunday, we're going to do that today at 8 o'clock. Sammy Levitt will join us as he gets ready to call today's 
uh, prospect game, the spring breakout game at the Peoria Sports Complex, Padres against the Mariners. And even with some, some of the top prospects in Korea with the Padres, like Jackson Merrill, still an exciting group of players that will be on the field today, Woods, for the San Diego Padres this afternoon. We're going to carry that game right here at 1 o'clock on 97.3 The Fan. Okay. All right. And then uh, I, I, didn't know what you, have, I didn't know. I what thought it. maybe you'd have a comment on the spring breakout game. I'm, you know what? I'm excited to hear Sammy work. I am too. Sammy, uh, you know, this is, I mean, that's his, he loves play by play. That's what he loves to do. Yeah. He and, called minor league baseball yeah. and Amarillo and Corpus Christi before he got here. Yeah. And, but I've never really, other than a, a highlight or two, heard right. much of, of Sammy's play by play. Now we'll get a chance uh, to hear him do a full game of San Diego Padres prospects today. Here on 97.3 The Fan. Is it fair to say that I hope he does a terrible job so he stays here forever and nobody wants to hire him away from 97.3 The Fan? Is that fair or is it just massively selfish? That's massively selfish, (laughs) But I love him. Yeah, I know. I love him. But I know, I'm just kidding. When you love something, you, you got to let, let it go. go. That's fair. That's absolutely And then if it fair. comes back to you, it belongs to you forever. I just love him. I just am I just enamored with. He just does such a great job, and he's done such a great job. No, of course, I, that was a joke. Because Sammy's listening right now. Sammy is going to knock it out of the park, as he always does. And then uh, Ooh, Adam says Sammy Incorporator. All right, done. Oh, yeah. It's done I, deal. I think oh. that's for sure a done, done deal. Done deal. Thanks, Adam. Finally, a good bid idea after six <laughs> oh, it years. Took him five, <laughs> yeah, five years. <laughs> Finally. I know you hate when I suggest things. Keep them coming like that. That was a really good one. Now we have to come up with a good word for Sam yeah, to now, uh, incorporate. Now the, now the pressure's on us. Into the spring breakout game this afternoon. Rital Report, uh, wrap things up for the week. Turn things over to Annie and Elston at 10 o'clock. We'll start, uh, let's start with that game yesterday. Oh, it was, was, pretty, it was pretty crazy. I mean, it looked Ugh. like they were going to get blown out. Then it looked like they, they were, were going to win out. easily. Ugh. And then it goes to overtime, and it's just a, a, a massive, as I said, roller coaster ride with this basketball team. But they're still alive in the Mountain West tournament. We'll get to that coming up next with Ben and Woods. Don't go away. It's San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Just a reminder, you can tune into 97 through the fan next Wednesday and Thursday as Soapy Joe's presents the games from Seoul, South Korea. Listen to Jesse Agler and Soapy Joe's Chief Bubble Officer Tony Wynn Jr. call the action. Soapy Joe's is also the official sponsor of our Padres in Seoul, South Korea watch party Wednesday morning, March 20th at 3 a.m. at Seven Mile Casino. It's all brought to you by Soapy Joe's Car Wash. Good, clean, fun. And I did, in fact, go to Soapy Joe's did yesterday. You? To wash my car, which, as always happens, the second that I pulled out of Soapy Joe's, it started sprinkling mm. in Mission Valley. Just a little bit. Just enough to kind of take the shine off yeah. the wash after I had pulled through. I, 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 What I enjoy about Soapy Joe's, and I know some people just want to sit back. You probably like to sit back and just have people How'd, how'd you guess? do the wash <laughs> for you. Uh, we've now devolved into having the guy come to our house. He's actually a tier one. He's if, amazing. If Marcus, he's really good, he's that's fine, but... I'll always get in my car after going to the car wash. And they missed, like, the spot that I really want them to get. Yep. Like, I just wanted to wipe that off. And now with Soapy Joe's, you get the towels and you can wipe off the, the parts that you really want to get to. And, like, vacuum really where you want to get vacuumed. And I I actually enjoy vacuuming my own car. Yeah. I know that's pe- weird. So, no, it's not. I mean, people have things that they like doing like that. It's very satisfying sad, just to satisfying see it all. about it. Just disappear and just as it all gets just like I'm weirdly like yeah. I like um, when we play baseball or something. I love organizing my baseball bag like I, for 45 minutes, like <laughs> dumping it out, getting everything. Or it's my favorite thing to do. I it just gives me such joy uh, every time I do it. There's I, there's weird things like that. Now I don't think I'd want to do it all day for other people's cars and no, be, be a game, car man. detailer. I That's think that would be tough. tough. But for game. my own. I absolutely do not mind it, and uh, I enjoy that part of Soapy Joe's, getting to do it myself. So you went, you left here, you went to Soapy Joe's, and then you hauled ass home. Actually, I hauled home, and then on my way back to work later in the day, I went to Soapy Joe's. Oh, okay. Back to Channel 10. Because you yeah. wanted to see your beloved Aztecs yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I watched the entire game. I... Had the kid, I had Bo with me. He's really getting into, he'll just sit and watch hoops or anything with me now, which is really fun. And uh, and he's really fallen in love with basketball, uh, much to my chagrin, because I know less than nothing about it. So he asked me questions. I have no idea. But we watched uh, that entire game yesterday. I was trying to get them in the shower. It went to overtime. And he's like, no, no, I got to see the end of the game. I'm like, all right, I got little basketball Bo in the house. And um, what a game. What a finish. Um, sucks that they didn't cover. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but other than that, man, that's they, you kind of expected a grindy ass game like that, and uh, it was. It was. It was very grindy, and there's a lot to work on with that team. Still, they're not a finished product. Yeah, I think one of the dangers, obviously, is they're playing a UNLV team that was desperate. The UNLV is not going to get a at large bid into the NCAA tournament. Their only path was winning three games in three days in the Mountain West tournament, and of course, as always, they get to play on their home floor. Uh, because they host the tournament at the Thomas and Max Center, so they had um, they had their arena. But I thought Aztecs fans traveled well. It sounded like there were more Aztecs fans at the game than UNLV fans, which is impressive. Now I do understand that they are on spring break, so you didn't have all the students you might have normally had at that game, and you heard them yelling, you know, Rebels, Rebels. But I I could swear when the Aztecs did something good. The cheers were louder than when UNLV did something good in that so, arena. That's so impressive, Aztecs fans. It also could have been louder because I found out yesterday my boy Tyler was flying out with his family to go. They go every year to the Mountain West Tournament. They were flying out yesterday to go to the game. His flight got canceled here in San Diego. Oh, no. Because the wind in Vegas was so bad, Ooh. they had to cancel the flight. So he got in a car, and they drove out there, and he missed the game. He said there were hundreds oh. of Aztec fans stranded at the airport no yesterday. No way. It, it was one of those goes, weird days. Thank God they won so you can watch them today. Yeah. yeah. He goes, yeah. If they would have lost, oh. I'd have been furious. Yeah. They, they were and, just stuck in Vegas, and, just mad. And yeah. they certainly could have lost that game. We will get into it right after a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. One problem southbound side of the 5 Dairy Mart Road off-ramp. There is an overturned SUV, so just watch out for a little activity there. Tow truck rolling up to help out with that. That's southbound 5 Dairy Mart Road off-ramp. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. All right, stop me if you've heard this before, but the game started and San Diego State could not make a thing. 
just absolutely abysmal shooting in the first half, which has basically been the same story for the last month and a half. 11. They trailed after five minutes for the 11th time in 12 games. It is like, it's like clockwork. They uh, they shot under 25% from the field in the first half, and they missed their first eight three-pointers, I believe, and then finally made one, and what may have turned the entire game around. So they were down double digits, and they, got, they were down eight, but UNLV had the ball with one and a half seconds left in the first half, and... They were going to run an inbounds play, like see if they could get a shot off. But instead, they turned it right over to Darion Trammell, who caught it just inside the half-court line, fired up a long three as the buzzer sounded, Couldn't and made it. it. It was the first three-pointer the Aztecs made the entire game, and it pulled them within five. And when you play and shoot as poorly as the Aztecs did, and you're on the road against a desperate team, and you're only down five at the half, that had to feel really good going into that locker room at that point, going... You know what? We couldn't have done any worse. Even Dutch said we should have been down by more than twenty. Yeah, he said that. Yep. Yeah, when you when you shoot twenty seven percent or whatever, you should be down by twenty seven. And they were down five. And I, I can also imagine on the other side, it created a little extra nervousness and panic for UNLV. Like, guys, we just wasted a huge opportunity to put that game away in the first half, and we didn't. And now we're only up five. Within five minutes of the second half, the Aztecs had the lead. Went on a twelve zero run. Uh, you know, they started hitting some long range shots. Finally, I don't know what was different, but uh, made made some threes, had some steals, put on the full court press. Uh, Jay Pal had a big dunk that forced a timeout, and San Diego State then went up by ten points. And it looked like, okay, now they're going to cruise. They have taken the will and life out of UNLV. Just have to, you know, finish it out, make your free throws down the stretch, which of course. They didn't do. And Jaden Ledee had a phenomenal game, 34 points and 16 rebounds, but he was not making his free throws. I think he missed like three or four critical ones down the stretch, every single one just keeping UNLV in the game until the last second when they made a basket to force overtime. And then it looked like in overtime, all right, Aztecs are going to lose this one. They're down four early. Uh, it just looks like it's all falling apart. It's going to be yet another one possession or close loss, overtime loss. I think it would have been, what, their 12th in a row or something that they had lost after they had won 19 or 20 straight close ones. They've lost a bunch in a row. But instead, they come back, and Jaden Ledee hits that little uh, like off the floated, glass, yeah. his, his uh, basket that, that gives them a lead with about 15 seconds to go. They get a stop. They go down. Ledee hits a couple of free throws. They're up three. And the end of the game was an interesting scenario as well. So 2.6 seconds left. UNLV needs a three to force double overtime. Brian Dutcher calls a timeout. And the announcers for CBS Sports Network are like, not sure I would have done that. You know, now you know UNLV didn't have any timeouts left. But Dutch had a reason for it. He wanted to tell his team, all right, they're going to inbound it. Foul immediately. Yeah. Put them on the line. They can only make two free throws. You've got a three-point lead. It'll take another second off the clock. Game will be essentially over. What happens? They inbound the ball. Two guys right there. Neither of them foul. They right. like look at each other, let him go right through yeah. and get off an absolutely wide open top of the key three pointer to send the game to uh, double overtime. And the gods were smiling because it hit the front of the rim. And I thought, oh, this is going to trickle over the yeah, top. The roll go over. In. Yeah, 100%. Just came up a little bit short. And San Diego State held on for the 74 71 win. I I watched uh, the entire game, and I, I thought, man, this team, again, d- huge defensive plays when they needed to. The one that I really love, Ben, when the guy, uh, one of the guys, I think it was number six on their team, has the ball. He then throws his hand up to look at the ref because he just got hacked. He, and he actually did get hacked pretty good. I think good. it was Saunders and who Saunders poked it out. Pokes yeah, it like... out. There was a few of those. But what I noticed, too, though, some really, really sloppy uh, passes from Jay Powell had a really sloppy pass. Mm-hmm. Ladie even threw one in the backcourt. I'm like, were you turned around? Like, did you think you were passing the other way? Really uncharacteristic things that you didn't see last year. I, they don't have that magic. You don't feel that magic. It doesn't mean you still can't get it. It doesn't mean you still can't get it. But somebody's gonna have to score. Somebody's gonna have to make buckets. Give me the numbers on my man Reese. My Re- my man Reese so is falling I, off the I put, table. So I put the numbers together on Micah Parrish and Reese Waters. This is together. so 
And bad. and remember, Micah Parrish was their best three point shooter coming back and was pretty hot early in the season. And Reese Waters looked like he was going to be the the answer. The the fi- the first guy that San Diego State has had in years that was going to be that absolute can't miss Jimmer style outside shooter that they've been looking for. They have both fallen off so hard. They played a combined 45 minutes in the game yesterday. They scored four points, one of 15 from the field, 0 of 7 from three-point range, 2 of 4 from the foul line. They committed seven fouls, two turnovers, and had one assist in 45 minutes. The The combined duo of guys putting up numbers like that in a game your team actually won. Crazy. Is stunning. And if if they want to do anything in the NCAA tournament, they're going to have to get at least one, if not both of those guys, back on track. And if it hasn't happened in the last month, I've got no idea what Brian Dutcher can do or say to get the confidence back of those two players. And I, I honestly, I don't know what's wrong. They both looked really solid early in the season. And now they both look lost out there on the court. And I get it. They're college kids. And I'm not going to be too hard on anybody. They're you know, they, these things happen at this age where you have these swings and it goes up and down. But they need both of those guys to to be the three-point shooters that they were counting on. Can't be shooting, you know, 20% from three-point range and, and have any chance to move on in the NCAA tournament. What was your theory? Or not your theory. So, yeah, it was uh, San Diego Josh tweeted when I, when I sent out that stat line. And he said, basically, you know, maybe it's because just Jaden Ladee has been so good and you have to run the offense through him. You have to be looking for Jaden Ladee. You'd be dumb not to. Yeah, he gets the ball even when he's double teamed. He's so dangerous that the rest of the team has basically kind of lost their rhythm in terms of, hey, I've got a pretty open shot, but should I shoot it or should I pass it into Jaden Ladee? And the right answer is probably pass it into Jaden Ladee, but how do you keep everybody else you can't, you can't. sharp and you know playing their game when they also they, know I've got a better option and he's right there and I should just give the ball to him? It's like it's like playing with Michael Jordan, right? right? Back then it a was bit, just like yeah. feed him the ball. Now I always wonder that dynamic. I've talked to Steve Kerr before. Like, yeah, yeah. How do you shoot a three pointer when you know I really should probably give the ball to Michael Jordan? <laughs> You'd be ready because I'm, when, I'm wide open, I, but, yeah, but, yeah, but but there's there's Mike right? <laughs> drawing the triple team. Like, wouldn't it make sense? But it's Mike and. It's a little bit like that with Jaden Ladee right now. It's why that offense that they ran was just, it was impenetrable. It was so good. It, it, it totally. Three guys collapse on MJ. Scottie Pippen's just hanging Wide out open. by himself. So good. Yeah. But you got to have the guy that can make. It's why they diminished Scottie Pippen so much. That's right. It's like, yeah, you were great, but, but you had a lot of help 100%. On, you know, on the court because of Michael Jordan's Not just I... absolute dangerousness. Okay, well, it, it always falls down to this in sports. Don't you want, if you're going to lose, Lose with your best player, right? You don't if you don't want Reese Waters taking yeah. those shots, uh, you know, over and over and over, just trying to get in a rhythm. If I'm going down, I'm going down with my best guy, and and I'm going down with Jaden taking the majority of the shots. And I'd say that is the head coach of the opposing team, hundred like, hey, percent. Jaden Ladee's not beating us today, right? Right. If, if Saunders or Bird or Parrish, if any of them hit, you know, tip your cap. A shot of their life, tip your cap. Great, you tip your cap, yep. but. Jaden Ladee is not beating us here. Uh, Elijah Saunders, who had been good, he also was 0 for 5, 0 for 4 from three-point range. No points in that game. One positive sign. Uh, Darion Trammell, who has struggled a bit this season, he was 3 for 4 from three-point range. Yeah. And remember how critical he was. He was the South region most valuable player last year. And he's essentially been relegated to a lesser role this season. But if he's getting hot at the right time of the year, we saw how important he was in the tournament last go around for the Aztecs. So, really they won that game though on uh, rebounding. They they won the rebounding battle 50 to 31 including 25 offensive boards in that game for San Diego State. On the other side, uh Deedon Thomas, DJ Thomas oh my is God, man. he is a real stud of a player. Um I, you know, I, I, if there's any Aztecs booster that wants to offer him a ton of NIL <laughs> money, wouldn't mind seeing him on the team next year on a transfer. How fun right would he now, be yeah. here, man? <laughs> Hey, you're like Vegas. No, 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 no. San Diego. Yeah, San Diego is where no. you want to be. I he, mean, that's the reality now of college basketball. When he took that ball all the way down the court with the clock running down, you heard the announcers going, what's he doing? What's he doing? He's got to shoot it. What's it? And he's like, <laughs> and just lays it in. The He's a freshman. The poise was unbelievable. Just knew exactly what it And when he had the ball in his hand standing the game, Benny, I was like, oh, man, this is the wrong guy. But, uh, man, what a, what, a, what a gutsy win. Gutsy win. You, you know, you, you bent. 
but you didn't break. Uh, tonight's going to be insane. Semifinals, uh, Utah State, who also had to survive Oof. overtime uh, against Fresno State just to advance to the semifinals as the number one seed. What a battle. That'll be a 6-30 game, a rematch uh, of Jaden Ledee against Great Osibor. The two players of the year, one yeah. from the media, the other from the coaches tonight. And then the second semifinal, you had upsets, both of them. It's the six versus the seven seed, Colorado State and New Mexico both won last night in the other quarterfinal matchups, knocking off uh, Boise State and Nevada. Nevada, Nevada. yeah, we're both uh, both lost. So you have the six and the seven seeds, and that was big for New Mexico because they're a, very much a bubble team, and they need every single win they can get right now uh, to try to get on the the right side of that line. So uh, that this could be a win and end game kind of thing for New Mexico tonight in the second semifinal. Uh, Justin Hudson, by the way, the coach at Fresno State, former Aztecs assistant, announced after that overtime loss that they were uh, he was parting ways mutually with Fresno State after, I think, six seasons as the head coach. Just never really totally got it going. They had a lot of injury problems this year for sure. So, so. Jerry Stackhouse out of a gig as well. Vanderbilt, that, yep. It was the uh, day that I learned that Jerry Stackhouse was uh, a college Jared coach. Jared Haas was out at Stanford. <laughs> there was a lot of a lot of teams losing their conference tournament this year, and the, this, the coach is out. So... That's the college basketball update. We'll give you the Padres update on the 31-man traveling roster and play a little take on Woods when we come back. Hour number two of Ben and Woods coming up next year on 97.3 The Fan.
Been getting our first uh, images of the Padres in Korea over the last few hours. Uh, they actually had a workout at the Gochiok Sky Dome, where the game is going to be played. The two games are going to be played next week against the Dodgers. Uh, players on the field, uh, a few shots of players out and about in Korea. So Fernando Tatis Jr. sampling some of the uh, delicacies, Korean food, on Instagram yesterday. Saw, uh, you know, uh, a few of the other players and Hassan Kim, obviously. Like has such been... a fun trip, man. So far, You know yeah. what? I've got some really, really uh, severe FOMO yesterday, and I didn't think that I would, I and know. I did. I went, da da I mean, really, from the moment they stepped into the airport, yeah. looking like rock stars with get, that reception. I got to get one of those tracks. Yeah, Don I Arcillo need, I uh, I got to have one was uh, filming as they walked in. There was a pretty decent uh, lineup of media and crowd at, at yeah, 2 33 a.m. when they <laughs> pulled in uh, to the airport there, uh, Incheon, in South Korea. And, uh, yeah, it looks like they've had a, a good time. They got out and about during the day, work out in the evening, and now settling in uh, for their first night, getting ready to get up on Saturday. Well, and it's cool because this is not just, like, this is the MLB International Series. It's not just the Padres and the Dodgers going off and kind of doing their own thing. I've seen a ton of friends of our show. Adam Jones, Xavier Scruggs said he was flying out there. Like a lot of MLB and MLB media people, they're all closing in on Seoul for these two games. Big like, deal. God, it looks fun, man. Yeah, it's a big deal. It really does. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't think I would want to go to that, and then I saw it, and I went, man, that looks like a real blast out there. I'm excited to get the games going, obviously, and, and the games that count, certainly. Um, I'm just excited for the season. I mean, again, it's, it's weird. Before the Dylan C signing, people were a, a bit more hesitant about the buy-in for the season. I think he, the ripple effect that he's going to have and has had already in the last couple of days, I mean, I'm getting more DMs. The guy that uh, brought our DoorDash last night was like, hell yeah, go Padres. I guess he's a listener. He went to school with uh, Tony and, and Chris, and he was like, I'm super excited now. Like, because of the Dylan Cease trade, like, I'm really, really excited now. Um, and I said, I, I know. I feel the same way. It just feels different uh, going out and making a move again. Uh, Cease was at the Peoria Sports Complex yeah. yesterday doing a, a little bit of throwing, recorded a video, and said, yeah, I'm on my way. I believe he is headed to Korea right now to join the team, and he is on the 31-man traveling roster, which was finally released. We were trying to figure it out yesterday. Uh, you know, we speculated. We saw that Eggy Rosario was on the prospects list for the game today, yeah. and I thought, well, does that mean he's not going, or did someone misprint? Apparently, someone just misprinted because he is, in fact, with the team. We yep. saw a picture of him in Korea, and he is on the roster, one of seven infielders, who made it? In fact, uh, all the three of the guys that we were wondering, the potential third baseman, are all there with the Padres in Korea. So we still don't know who's on the team, the final 26, and who's going to start at third base for the Padres on opening day because Graham Pauly, Eggy Rosario, and Tyler Wade all made the traveling squad. They only brought four outfielders, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., Jerickson Profar, Jose Azokar, and Jackson Merrill are the four outfielders they brought. So they're... I mean, clearly, Jackson Merrill is a major part of these teams' plans. Uh, you know, he's going to make the 26 man and almost certainly going to be the opening day center fielder. Oh, yeah. The one big surprise, and it's not that Brett Sullivan is there. I expected him to be there as well after the spring that he's had and the way he can be a left-handed kind of utility guy almost. They brought uh, a extra pitchers, I think 16 pitchers total. And the one that surprised me is they did bring Adrian Morejon with them on the trip. <laughs> Has struggled this spring, is out of options. Now, he hasn't made the 26, man. He could still be, you know, tried to sent down and put on waivers before the opening day, but it sounds like they at least weren't ready to make that decision before they went to Korea. So, is he Adrian Morion, he is optionless. And if they if they don't have him on the roster, they will have to offer him up to other teams. Same with Luis Patino. He did not make the 31-man uh, traveling squad, so he'll, he'll be likely sent down and... Now, that doesn't mean anyone's going to claim him. If he goes unclaimed, the Padres can ask them to accept minor league assignments. And maybe Adrian Morejon won't as well, but there's probably a team or two that would find one or both of those guys intriguing enough to take a flyer. So it sounds like the yeah, Padres I are mean, going to lose someone. You know, in, in Morejon's case, so highly touted, left-handed. Yes, he will have a job in baseball, and he will get claimed if you put him on waivers. But... 
I feel like this is the conversation we've had. We started covering this show together uh, six years ago. I feel like we've had this con- I feel like this is a conversation we've had. Like, can he take the next step? Can he take the next step? Now, I, I realize the last outing, recency bias, the last outing that he had was horrific. But he hasn't had a great spring. Um, I, I don't know what, what it is. I don't know. You wish that you could get in there and, and see. Is it mental? Is it physical? You know, I think physically he's fairly healthy. That's what I've seen and heard. Um, I just, he's so, he's got the ability, Ben, to be really nasty. We've seen him, you know, tap into a little of that potential at times and, uh, just hasn't been able to put the whole thing together. Uh, need a contestant for take on woods. You're going to play here in about uh, three or four minutes, eight, three, three, two, eight, eight, zero, ninety seven, three. If you want to try to qualify for the trip to the fountain blue, Las Vegas and the $150 dinner credit, eight, three, three, two, eight, eight, zero, ninety seven, three for our musical trivia game. Now here's the, um, Here's the rules. This is from the UT and Kevin AC. So four pitchers and a position player on the travel roster will have to be trimmed before the game. Okay. Two of those players will have to be optioned to the minors or placed on waivers. The other three can be designated as taxi squad members without any further transaction until March 28th. So essentially they're getting a 29 for 26 roster for these two games. Okay. But you will have to make a decision on two of them. One of them potentially being Stephen Kolek, who is with the team as well. The uh, right-handed pitcher who was the Rule 5 draft pick that they stole from the Seattle Mariners in the offseason would have to be on that 26-man roster, at least by the 28th of March, or would need to be offered back to the Seattle Mariners. And he had a really solid spring. And uh, The question is, do you have room for him on your roster, knowing that you can't send him down to the minors yeah. throughout the entire season? I mean, like... You can't have him for three months and then, hey, we need you down for the minors for two weeks. Uh Uh-uh. You send him down at all during the year, and he has to be offered back to the Mariners, which makes him – it both gives him an opportunity but also makes him a bit of a liability as well over the course of the season. So I think that's going to be one of the the trickier, tough decisions for A.J. Preller here in the next couple of days. I mean, is it, though, because – if he's effective, great. That's what you wanted, you know, and and if he's not, then – you can you can let him go. You can start the season yeah, start and start the season know, struggling, and yeah. then, then you can give him back to the Mariners at some point. And True, you, you do feel you know you do feel like you have other arms there in the wings. And we talked yesterday on the roundtable uh, about some of the depth that you may have with with some arms. And um, you know, Sammy made the really good point with the addition of Dylan Cease. Uh, elongating the rotation. It's not only just we got a really good pitcher here. It pushes guys into the bullpen. It Push, somebody's going to lose their job. Um, you know, somebody's going to have to go to the minors that probably would have had a shot to make the team. Obviously, the guys that you have to keep, you will keep. And if they're terrible, they're terrible. But it allows you the chance, Ben, to not rush a Dylan Lesko or a Robbie Snelling. Um, it is that was kind of the tough part, though, about about losing Iriarte and about losing uh, Drew Thorpe is because those guys were probably one and one A, uh, either to make the roster or your first call. I loved what Craig said yesterday, too, about, look, last year when somebody got nicked up, who was your call to? Nothing against Reese Kinnear. He's a really nice guy. I've met him. You talked to him. But that was your guy coming up. It was Drew Carlton coming up. This feels a little bit different. Jackson Wolf. Jackson Wolf come right. And it, the, that just didn't feel like the, the, the bevy of arms that we have now. Jeremiah Estrada also did yes. make, we, as we know, the traveling like squad. Guy. He's had a terrific spring. The Indio a native who was uh, claimed last season seems to have figured something out yeah. though. So does he get a spot on the uh, the twenty six man? And could could there be a couple of surprises sent down to the minors because guys who do have options that you would have said is, are definitely on the team. Randy Vasquez is he definitely going to be on the team? You can send him down and yep. bring him up. Tom Cosgrove, who I would think was going to be a critical member of the bullpen, but remember he has options yeah. still. Tough, you dude. could start him in the minors and bring him up at any time. Uh, depending on what you know, AJ thinks is strategically more advantageous for the Padres in their bullpen to start the season. Well, you need uh, you need obviously Cosgrove is going to pitch in this series. Uh, he has he has good numbers against Otani. That's a good point. You know, so yeah, I think this one is is you need those lefties. Um, and there's you know with him, Wandy Peralta, Tom. There's Tom Cosgrove, Wandy Peralta. There's Morihone, who's a lefty. Who else is our, our lefties? Uh, let's see. Oh, Matsui. Peralta, Matsui, Cosgrove. Yep. Yep. And uh, and more home. So yeah, I mean, look, if you're a left-handed batter, left-handed pitcher, there's there's room for you, especially in this series. Um, 
against the Dodgers. All right. Uh, we've got a contestant on the line. Let's get to it. It is time to play our Friday edition of Ton Woods. Oh, we got to get another tough contestant today. Guy is on the line. Take on Woods is brought to you by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. It only takes 15 minutes. You don't have to get out of your car. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com. That's SoCalOilChange.com. Love when people play along in our YouTube chat as well. Guy, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning. All right. For a rematch. Yeah, let's get you qualified here for uh, for March. Give you another shot. Uh, if you do, beat or tie Woods, we'll put you into the drawing for our two-night stay at the Fontainebleau Las Vegas and dinner for two. The Fontainebleau Las Vegas built upon more than 70 years of sublime beauty, unparalleled service, and timeless design. Book now at FontainebleauLasVegas.com. Categories, mind games. Mind, the key word there, forever and ever. Uh, five answers with either ever or forever in the title. And our new category is cherry-picking. Those are five answers that include the word cherry. So, Guy, mind games, forever and ever, or cherry picking? Go mind games. Mind games. All right, today we're looking for five musical answers that all contain the word mind or minds. You'll have 60 seconds to answer as many as you can. As you know, if you don't know one, you can pass. We'll come back to it. If there is still time left on the clock at the end, our first question is our two-second song. Uh, Polly's going to play you the music. Give me the title and the artist to score that point. Guy, are you ready to play? Let's do it. Paul, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. The category is Mind Games. Your time begins when Paul plays our music. Good luck, Guy. Let's take on Woods. Boston, but I got uh, peace of mind. Correct. Boston. Which band song Don't You plays during the opening and closing credits of the movie The Breakfast Club? Simple Mind. Correct. In 1979, which Ray Charles classic was designated as the official state song by the legislature in Atlanta? Uh, Georgia on my mind. Correct. We're caught in a trap. I can't walk out are the first two lines of which Elvis Presley classic? Uh... Mind. Correct. The last time a Beatle hit number one on the charts in America was for which George Harrison single from 1987? Got my mind set on you. There Bang. it is, guys. See, now oh, you got boy. it. Just that easy. Five for five. That's a uh, that's a qualifier for Las Vegas and a potential outright win. All Woodsy can do is tie. So let's bring him in for his half of this game. Congratulations, guy. Polly, I'll get your information coming up here. All right, guy's score is locked in. Guy? It's Guy. You know you strap in, buddy. You know you need a pretty good score, right? Always. All right, sixty seconds on the clock. Woodsy doesn't get the category. Just call this game Woods v Guy from now on. <laughs> Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Woods. Let's take on Guy. It's Boston. I'll come back to it. Which band song "Don't You" plays during the opening and closing credits of the movie The Breakfast Club? Uh, Simple Minds? Correct. In 1979, which Ray Charles classic was designated as the official state song by the legislature in Atlanta? Uh, Georgia on my mind. Correct. We're caught in a trap. I can't walk out. Suspicious Uh, Minds. Correct. The last time a Beatle hit number one on the charts in America was for which George Harrison single from 1987? Something, um, is it mine? Something mines. Uh, mine, mine, mine. (sighs) Give me the Boston one again. Uh, f- <laughs> uh, f- three isn't going to get it's it looking done. looking good for I Guy right now. You're going to need both need, of them. Yeah, uh, right. Sure. Um, guy, three, two, one. Taint. Congratulations. Boy, guy. You have won today's game of Take on Woods by a 5-3 score. Take, so Taking my time? That song is called Peace of Mind by Boston. And then the other one is Please. George Harrison. I got my mind oh, set. I hate that song. Uh, it doesn't matter if you hate it or not. You still have to answer the question. Wasn't that the Traveling Wilburys or no? Was that George no, Harrison? No, that was George Harrison. I hate that song.
I got my mind set on you. I got my mind <laughs> It's not Songs Woods Live. I know. It's Take On Woods. There's a Damn difference. It. Guy, good job. Guy's a beast. Uh, you get your information here coming up in the break as a winner on a Friday. Sus- Suspicious Minds is literally one of the best songs ever written and recorded. That's a good one. It is I'm so caught in the trap. I can't walk, walk out. out. Because I love I, um, too much, baby. I can't tell the difference Why between any Boston me? song. I really can't either, man. <laughs> I knew that would be I tough really because can't they all sound the same to me. Yeah. They're I, good. They're, they're good. fine. They're yeah. good. I like them when I hear but them. Couldn't tell you which one is which. Yeah, high no voice. idea. High, high they voice. They all sound the same to well, me. Well, I'm taking my time. <laughs> they're ba- badass, though. They're like, ba- oh, yeah, yeah. Badass. But Their you, debut record was I, It's always like, that's Boston. What song is it? No idea. No idea. No idea what song that is. Give me a little suspicious mind, Polly before we get out of here. God, that's a good And one. then uh, we'll get to Don't Do This coming up next. This is a karaoke staple of mine, by the way. Suspicious Minds. Oh, yeah. Karaoke. Lord, I love some mine. Oh. It doesn't get any better. I can't walk on. Like big fat Elvis at the end just singing this just kills me. <laughs> just kills me. Why can't you see? Oh, Beautiful. Well, good job, guys. All right, I'm not sure. We've got a multitude of a bevy of don't do this options. A bevy, if you will. Is this where we bring up John Gruden, or do we, we save him for later? Warmest, I, warmest congratulations I've got, to I've got a swarm of bees story. John we've got Gruden. an incident with Dave Roberts already in Korea. <laughs> like We've got a bevy of stories, and we're just going to sort it out here during our break. And then we'll be right back with Don't Do This After yeah. Traffic. John Gruden needs to be discussed. <laughs> On 97.3 The Fan.
All right, let's get into it. A couple of stories that make you shake your head from the world of sports. Woodsy, why don't you lead us off today on Don't Do This? I kind of wanted you to do this story, but I guess I'll just go ahead and do it. I was, uh, you, you know, stories that make you shake your head. I, I shook my head when I saw uh, awful announcing tweet yesterday that John Gruden has found a new home with the uh, seaman of Milano. There is a foot. Sorry, what was that? The Milano seaman. And uh, is that it? Is that a team? It's a team. The S- In Italy. Yeah, S-E-A-M-E-N. Seaman. Tell you what, man, I'm really excited to join the Seaman. <laughs> the Milano Seaman. Yeah, they... Uh... Couldn't they just be like the Mariners or something? Correct. Yeah, the... Knock on wood we... if you're with me, man. Are the Sailors... <laughs> Are we listen? Are we losing something in translation here from I, the original I, Italian, or this is how they translate it? That's what they're. Your, I mean, they call it here. That, like, if you're in the Navy, right. yeah, it's a seaman. He uh, said, uh, "So the Milano seaman is a uh, European Just league to be clear, of football." It's S E A M E N. S E A M E N. Yeah, I think that's important to note. He is now a uh, uh, an advisor for the seaman, seaman advisor, if you will. <laughs> He's an up. Put that on the resume. <laughs> up and up and down. No, 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 right. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Uh, I mean, from a sports perspective, that's uh, that's going a long way from being an NFL head coach to being an advisor in a league and team I have never heard of in my life in Italy. Because he's not going to have any more jobs here in the United States. No, I think when you take a job as a seaman advisor. You're out of options in the states, honestly. I think that's probably your last. That's your last uh, chance at. You know, you love the game of football, I guess. Now, listen. He, he, we all know the John Gruden story: racist, misogynistic emails that that somehow were leaked, uh, and and people found them. And and he, I mean, he cost himself a ton of money. And you know, listen. He he wants to stay in the game of football, and the only job he could find was with the team of Milano. Don't he, I don't and there's a okay. shirt of him in his new Milano Seaman advisor shirt. <laughs> his advisor? It doesn't say advisor. Does it his advisor boss on make, the picture. Does his boss make him wear that shirt? <laughs> we'll get to an update on that story in a moment. <laughs> All right, I will um I will follow it's up a real here. team. And uh, you probably saw some of the videos of the Padres arriving without incident in Seoul, South Korea at the airport last night. The Dodgers then arrived uh, I think a couple of hours later. And they did not make it completely without incident because as they were walking through the airport along that same line where we saw the Padres and Don Orsillo and some of the players with cameras and fans, uh, something flew through the air at Dodgers manager Dave Roberts. And according to uh, sports writer Jiho Yu, uh, an egg was thrown at the Dodgers manager. Now, Yikes. the egg tosser was not accurate enough to hit him, and it just kind of glanced by him Ooh, without incident. But he said, I left the scene early. Some idiot threw an egg in the direction of Dodgers manager Dave Roberts as he walked toward an exit at the airport here. There are some witnesses. Police and airport authorities are trying to find out more, but apparently they have not caught the egg-throwing culprit. Go Dave Roberts. Yet. What if it, I mean, was, who Mike, would, what if it was Mike Schill? Who doesn't like <laughs> Dave Roberts? Oh, well, I, I was thinking. Set the tone just to Set make the sure for the season. you're not going to be throwing at my guys or I'll be throwing at you. Lying in wait. He got there first. Mike Schill <laughs> could have been waiting at the airport. But, um... No, we're not even, you know, somebody said, oh, Padre, Korean Padre fan. Did he? You don't I, know that. Could I mean, the, Dodger I fan. would say that, you know, what's the motive? Who has a motive to throw something at Dave Roberts? No one really is mad at Dave. He hasn't beaten anyone of significance to make them mad. Right. So it's probably a Dodger fan That's who's unhappy yeah. with Dave Roberts that would throw an egg at him. He's been waiting, like in Korea, frustrated a... for years, finally getting their opportunity. Like, how many chances do you get exactly. with the money that you invest? After the all, the playoffs, had, all the playoff disappointments in recent years, it's like, I'm finally getting a chance to express my yeah. displeasure at my manager. My, I'm going to show up at the airport. I'm going to throw an egg at him. My vote is it was probably a Dodger fan, a Korean Dodger fan. That, that's who I think it was, for sure. Uh, got an update uh, for you for uh, Doo Doo This. DD Mega Doo Doo. I told you guys in the open, had a uh, combo with our boss, Michael, yesterday, and he said from now on, you know, you guys need to, when you go out in public, you need to rock the 97.3 logoed polo. And uh, I said, please, please don't make us. I uh, said absolutely. And Polly said no. 
And I, you know, I don't want to replace Paulie. I don't want to. I don't want. I'll walk. Paulie well, will walk. But my, you know, Michael wants the free advertising as well. We've already found out we're going to be on multiple television stations next week. I believe our, so. Yeah. At our viewing party, they're making plans to yep. come out with video cameras for our our listeners who are going to be at the, uh, the our tier one viewing party. That's exactly right. And uh, so we we said, please don't make us do this. And we said we offer Ben Ben as tribute. And Ben will be sacrifice. A sacrificial Ben. He will wear the. He would wear it anyway. It's a free polo shirt, which is very much your mo. Here's the problem. I couldn't remember to wear green for our St. Patrick's Correct. Day celebration. Am I going to forget to put on the shirt when You're, I'm supposed to put it on? You are in fact a young hacksaw who wears just nothing but radio station giveaway shirts, <laughs> right? Um, and that's that's who you are. They're very affordable. They're very for the free. Club Pilates. Yeah, free ninety nine. And so I said, Michael, please don't make us do it. So he wrote in the chat, I'm listening now. Love the opening bit. I will take Ben wearing the polo. Ben, I will get you other ah, colors. Okay, nice good. job. And I've got a, an entire wardrobe. Now, <laughs> just as a wrinkle, as a wrinkle, I did see Katie uh, went to our our Twitter. And Michael may have seen this. Now, he did. we did threaten to take him all the way to the Supreme Court if he forced us Woods to do the it. Woods v. Odyssey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Katie says, uh, catching up on the show, HR manager here, dig out your employee handbook. What is your dress code policy? <laughs> he might have seen that and said, I better not push this any further. Because Woods will dig in. Yeah, we've done all those Odyssey training modules. I don't remember one specifically addressing mm. you have to wear polo shirts if your boss tells you to. I will pull the, it's not in my contract, <laughs> bit. <laughs> Which they love. And Adam comes in. Hey, hey actually. actually. So uh, hey, thank you, this Michael. Is, Thanks uh, for being this is, this is a boss evaluating his employee and deciding, you know what, we can we can make this work, which I like. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. And that's much. do and uh, don't do this for a Friday. That was Don't Do This with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. All right. Uh, we are down to the 16 remaining contestants in our Tournament of Drops, the fifth annual Tournament of Drops. We will reveal the final four members of the Sweet 16 as uh, voted on by you. We've trimmed the fat. The Tier 1s. We have uh, reduced half of the field, and we will give you the first four matchups to determine uh, half of our Elite Eight. By the time we get back here on Monday, we will do that coming up next with Ben and Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Let's get some worked up about. I would say it's very mad. Really small detail sometimes. The devil is so in the details. Yesterday we happened to have a run of like three straight Tom Petty songs as our bumper music. Yeah. And just now, if you were listening, going into the break, we had a Cars song. Yep. And just coming back out of the break, we had another Cars song. There's nothing inherently bad about having the same artist playing multiple times like on like the show. you like the song enough to put it in but the rotation. But it really drives Woods crazy if there's not a really great distribution of it songs me, as, as our bumper music. Makes It truly makes You hear insane. one artist, you don't want to hear him again until at least the right. next day, I if not two such, or three days. I put such thought into the music programming of this show. But I do they come, they come up fairly randomly, right, Paul? Well, they're it's, supposed to. It's like... Uh, it's well, like they come out in order. It's... Very textual. Like Nobody shuffle. really cares about it. No, it's not like shuffle. It's not like shuffle. There's an order, but we have two different rotators. Two different things. Each rotator has a hundred songs in it. Right. And so they alternate between the first so one and the one second one. So one has a petty, and the other just happens to be on the petty as it right. switches like to I the can other see one. See what's it coming ends up, up in next. Two days in. What's coming up next? Is it the cars? Because I'm going to flip out if it's the cars. It's a good times roll by the cars <laughs> moving in stereo. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, if you want to go through and just have one song from every artist in our bumpers, I I it would that. never, <sighs> never repeat. But I don't think anyone really minds. Led Zeppelin's if, up next. Okay. You get a couple I of mind. songs from okay? the same That's artist fine. a I couple mind. of times in a row. I mind. Uh, you can listen to Sam Levitt's podcast, Inside San Diego Baseball. Sam is covering everything on with the Padres right now in spring training, but uh, he is great with the content. Always amazing. You can find it at 97.3thefansd.com, the Odyssey app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Sammy, unbeknownst to him, I believe at this point, is going to be playing the incorporator for the first time today, uh, taking Jesse's spot as he calls the spring breakout game with uh, Padres prospects versus Mariners prospects this afternoon here on 97.3 The Fan. So we had to come up with the uh, perfect word to give our beloved Sammy in one hour when he joins us this morning. How about the cars? That's a good one to That's probably weave into pretty the show simple, today. Yeah, we'll see. All right, uh, let's uh, check traffic, and then when we come back, we will give you the winners of our final region of the first round of our tournament of drops and then set the matchups for the start of the Sweet 16 next here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Got a crash clearing from the Dairy Mart off-ramp southbound 5, and looks like that accident has been cleared from two right lanes on westbound 78 before Twin Oaks Valley. Still seeing a lot of residual slowing there. I'm Kelly Danick with Ben and Wood, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Now, are you okay with the music that Kelly chose for her traffic <laughs> Listen, there? Listen, it's that attention to detail, Polly, that has made us, make sure. made us great. All right? I will never apologize for All it. right, here, here's how we've lined this up. So uh, for the last four days, we've gone through the the opening field of 32 in our fifth annual tournament of drops. You have voted, and you have reduced the field to 16. Uh, after the next two days, so today and then Monday, we'll get it down to 8. On Tuesday, we'll go from 8 to 4. On Wednesday, we'll go from 4 to 2. And then next Thursday, we will have our championship round. And one week from today... We will crown the fifth annual Tournament of Drops champion here on the Ben and Woods program. Better be a good one, man. It so better be a good one. Let's give the results out for yesterday's matchups in our round of 32, the wild card region in the bottom right hand of our bracket. And uh, let's start with the number one seed, uh, which was my ding a ling a ling noise going up against Dave, Dave Grohl. Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling. And uh, you and saying it is actually funnier. It's really than funny. My ding a ding a ling a ling noise. Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. And the uh, the winner of uh, Hi Paul uh, by Dave Grohl and Ding a ling a ling was with sixty four point two percent of the vote. Polly. Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. No yeah. brainer that to me. Sorry, Paul. Uh, Hi Paul is out it's of okay. the tournament of drops. Uh, in the four five matchup in the wild card region, uh, Pity City. Our uh, our politician or our CEO, CEO who was cutting cutting staff but didn't want you, you to feel sorry Pitty for yourself. You can visit City, but you can't live there. Against uh, it's tricky, tricky, it's tricky. tricky, 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 tricky. With seventy five percent of the vote even on this one, the winner was. You can visit Pity City, but you can't live there. Yeah, makes right. sense. That's all advanced to face uh, ding a ling a ling in the Sweet Sixteen. <laughs> uh, in our three versus six matchup, we had Darko 
the head coach of the Toronto Raptors. Unhappy. It's a complete crap. Going Fantastic. up against our uh, our fake Italian. Hey, where's the freaking gabagoo? And in one of the closest matchups of the first round, with 53.9% of the vote, the winner was... It's a complete crap. Wow. Darko moving on into the Sweet 16. It is a good one, but I love... I love the Gabagool guy. And then finally, the 2 7 matchup Welsh Friar and his 58 letter Welsh town name. Sam Fire, Pusquin, Gisco, Gerrit, Queen Job, Atlanta, Silio, Go, Go, Go. Going up against uh, Ben, one of my simpler drops. I like San Diego State. There you go. And with 69.4% of the vote, the nice. winner was. Sam Fire, Pusquin, Gisco, Gerrit, Queen Job, Atlanta, Silio, Go, Go, Go. Welsh Friar moves on into the Sweet 16. So there you go. We've got uh, half of the field now cut, and we are down to the uh, next four matchups of the Sweet 16. We'll go back over to the left side of our bracket, back to the explicit region, top left. And the first matchup today will be the number one seed in the explicit re region. I can't speak. Hey there, Delilah. Ooh, going up against uh, yours truly, the four seed that won in the first round. Orgasmic revelation. Wow, if you just put those together, <laughs> what do you get? You get a very happy boy. So that's the one four matchup in the explicit region. And then <laughs> we've got the uh, the two seed in the explicit region. Uh, two seed. Two Sorry. seed. Sorry, we're distracted. That's, that's <laughs> oh, no, I like it creamy. Wow. And I will be going up against our traffic reporter, Kelly Danick. In and the... someone didn't secure their load of gravel. <laughs> and those are your uh, four remaining contestants in the explicit region. Oh, man. Those are your two matchups. It's so explicit. And it's the double entendre. Yeah. It's the place we went. But it was very... <laughs> They're both double entendre. Can't really they are, go wrong yeah. with any of those. You really... Drops. I'm happy with that bracket. I mean, that's so well done, <laughs> you guys. They're so good together. And then uh, the lower left-handed bracket, the baseball bracket, led by the number one seed, Goose Gossage. You're out. a nerd, too. Oh, from that, Fantasy Camp. That could be your winner, man. And uh, going up so against good. another Fantasy Camp coach in Mud Grant... Take a listen. Oh. oh, Goose versus Mud is going to be an interesting one. I don't think so. Like, we I... were we were streaming those shows out at Fantasy Camp on YouTube. And everybody everybody was able to watch. I will have the image of, of Goose Gossage ingrained in my memory forever. Like my... he was pointing at Ben. He was so mad. My at head, ben Higgins. My head was between my legs. It was <laughs> it was between my legs, staring at the floor, just waiting for it to You're a nerd too. I never had a guy drop an S bomb and two P bombs and on our show bomb. and an F bomb. And then later in the day, I had to do a brown table of yeah, moderate, moderate panel with Goose sitting right next to me. He was fine. <laughs> he was it very was, nice. It was then. fine. Yeah. It worked out. Oh my lord! And then our final matchup of our Sweet Sixteen today, the two seed in the baseball region, John Smoltz. I just felt the way that the roster is built, they would have to outscore their opponents to win. Yeah, it was a good feeling that you had. You're Very insightful. Right. Very, insightful. Very insightful, John. Going up against our Manny Machado. What up, crew? Ooh, this is a tough one. That's a I, tough one. I feel like John Smoltz is more integral to the show, but Manny is much more beloved. Well, here's the problem. I've already seen people vo you know, rooting for Mud to beat Goose Gossage. There's no way Mud's drop is a better drop. Vote for the best drop. Not who you Vote love for the most. Who you who you want I'll to? Be there's no if Goose loses. There's no tomorrow. right or wrong. Voting. I love mine. it's it's how you feel. There's no right or wrong way to vote. Juan in the Soto tournament beating of Adam last year just because I know people you're frustrated, Juan Soto. but guess what? More than fifty percent. Is it extra sweet because this is against the Dodgers? More than no fifty percent of people felt like they wanted to go with the Juan Soto. That's their prerogative. So just because dumb. it makes you mad, so dumb. doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. Vote with your head, not your heart. So those are the uh, the first four matches of the Sweet 16. We'll have the winners on Monday, and then we'll move back over to the right side of the bracket and give you the other four matchups of the Sweet 16 on Monday. And since we've done it all week long, we started by going back to our first tournament of drops four years ago and then did the entire fields from 2021 you forget, and man. 2022. And there were so many drops that I had forgotten about. Might as well wrap it up uh, with our 2023 field. This was last year's fourth annual Tournament of Drops field. Is it extra sweet because this is against the Dodgers? Good morning, guys. Can I get a oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Big dumper, come come Fernando. I didn't even get a free meatball out of the deal. It's flapping. There it is. Where are these cream pies coming from? Hold on. Remix. 
Rams. Bob Millen. <laughs> that was good. All Bob right. Millen. Did you catch a game last night? Do you like hot fudge sundaes? Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. Is it still hot out there? <laughs> okay, how are you? We are winning the World Series in 2022. <laughs> I love Ben and Woods. Finally the chance for somebody to get on and do some good sports talk radio. Oh, yeah, the Padres <laughs> won. There it was. Glory hole. The series is over. Let's go, San Diego. Good morning, everybody. Look at Nelly Cruz. Suck it. Are you ready to bless the moon? Toilets. That's what's in. Ah. So, sports. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, uh, last year, <laughs> we thought Adam was going to take the crown. I know it's and, my I know it's my drop, but that drop makes me laugh when so, so sports. <laughs> sports. That guy that I worked with had me so spun out every single day after every sports report that I did. He made me feel like I was the worst person on the radio that's ever lived. Every, so Polly Sports. Imagine this. Every after every Rindle report. Every Rindle report, the mics go off, and I berate you until it's time for the next. I do this. The, yeah, you got to have more energy. That sucked, man. That oh. sucked. You must have made a lot of money back then. I made Jack S back then. I just wore it every day. Oh, oh it was the war. Every time. So I was so spun out. Every time I had to do Woods on Sports was the name of the, the deal. So and then you ended up having to do an entire sports show yeah. uh, just a few years later. It's, There's irony here. The irony this is, is irony. beyond rich. Beyond rich. But I, it was the war. Every round of report, I just fillet you after I, it's I, over. I wouldn't like that. Of course. <laughs> just fillet you. I would not like that. It's terrible. So that's where you get the so sports gnarly so i uh, want to thank everybody we've had thousands of votes already uh, in our tournament of drops and again we posted them on twitter you can start voting uh, now and you'll have uh, all weekend i guess or is it going to close in 24, still hours? 24 hours still 24 we'll hours so get your get your votes in today but we'll reveal the winners on monday and then continue with the rest of our uh, sweet 16 in the tournament of drops yeah. fifth annual your votes in my friends i don't want you're right i don't i shouldn't tell people how to vote i, I mean you can. You can lobby. You can politic and give your own opinions. Yeah. Ted just said no election interference. You're right. You're, you're right. a nerd too. You're a nerd too. Just you're a nerd too. Hammer it. You're a nerd how good it is. You're a nerd too. God, that was uncomfortable. You're a nerd too. I wish I hadn't interrupted him. I wish it was clean. That's the only it's, thing. It doesn't matter. I don't was, like about the drop. It was. It was still just a legendary, legendary moment. You're a nerd too. So, um, got the news yesterday that Garrett Cole uh, apparently will not need Tommy John surgery for the New York Yankees and should return in 10 to 12 weeks. Now, 10 to 12 weeks is still a long time. A long That's time. two and a half months or three months, if I'm doing my math correct. That's uh, almost half of the season. So, the question is, are the Yankees going to go out and spend even more money over the luxury tax to acquire a pitcher like Blake Snell or reacquire a pitcher like Jordan Montgomery. Now, I also saw some Snell Houston Astros rumors going around oh, today. I saw that as well. That Snell was a, a big target of the Astros at the trade deadline last year. Yeah, when they said he uh, coveted him. Ultimately, the Padres decided not to sell at the deadline. They kept Blake Snell. You kind of obviously hindsight being twenty twenty wondered what could you have extracted from the Houston Astros for Blake Snell at that point if they were really coveting him. And knowing, you know, they weren't going to make the playoffs would have been nice to go and get something for Blake Snell. And Josh Snell, Hader. As supposed, yeah, and Josh Hader, and who they ended up signing, too. You yes. Yeah. Put, it, put together the giant Snell-Hader package to the Astros. Who knows? Got maybe, anybody you wanted. Maybe we'd be talking about the World Series champion Houston Astros today had that all gone down. But ultimately, the Padres felt like they were close enough to compete. I can't say that they weren't. They got within two games, and they certainly gave away a few down the stretch that they could have made the playoffs uh, having kept those guys. And then you would have gone, well, I'm glad they certainly kept Blake Snell and got to the playoffs. But now in hindsight, it's like, oh, what could you have had from the Houston Astros? Now, don't know if they're willing to go in free agency and meet his price right now, but there was some talk that they might be interested uh, in discussing a contract with Blake Snell right now. Yeah, I, I mean, again, you're going to you are up against it <clears throat> if you sign Blake Snell. And let's be honest, man, it's not just Blake Snell. It's it's any of the hitters as well. Um the time the timing has it's just been too long. It's just been too long. You are you know you're going to go in and sign these guys, Ben, 
And there's going to have to be some sort of ramp up. Now, guys like J.D. Martinez, he's a pro. You know he's been hitting like crazy. You know Tommy Pham's been working hard on this game. It's just not the same. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. Um, it's going to be an adjustment period. Michael Lorenzen uh, is a name that the Yankees have been connected to. You know, you hear that with Garrett Cole, and we're pretty familiar with the. Oh no, no, he's fine. This is going to be. He's going to be out six weeks day or something. Day. day to day, and you know, it, there's just no way to tell. I, I would think that you would need to go bolster your rotation anyway. It's not like you'd. Ne- it's not like you don't need pitching <laughs> always. You know, Strowman's going to get hurt, or Radon's probably going to get hurt. Like you, they could use one of these guys immediately. So I'm. It's it's really weird how teams that have traditionally just pulled the trigger when they needed something are now being very, very cautious. It's, it, it's, it's a sea change. Well, but if you're the Yankees, and you know that that's going to be a very tough division with the with the Orioles and the Blue Jays yeah, and the, hence and why the Rays. You, hence why you need more. And but, you only have Soto but, for a but year. But like the, like the Padres or any other team, is if you're the Yankees, it's like, hey, let's just get in. You know, I think we already have enough to be a wild card team. I mean, and do let's you? just get in. And by the way, if you know we get to July, we'll have a better idea. Is Cole back or is he not back? Well, How but, does our rotation look? Do you want to wait before making a big decision and locking in for a guy for five or six years that you weren't obviously that high on, or you would have signed him already anyway? Correct, but you're you're already fifty million over the luxury tax, and I mean, what's ten more, twelve <laughs> more? You know, seriously, like if you got to go for it. The waiting game to to wait till the deadline, and I know we're probably going to end up doing that here, leaving a little bit of a cushion. And if it's thirteen million um, that we go into the season with, so be it. Um, and like Craig said yesterday, I'm also fine staying under that tax. Paying that tax is is can set you back a little bit. But you're the you're the New York Yankees. You have no shortage of money, and if you got to pay the tax, you have to pay the tax. You got Juan Soto for one year, and you gave up. You know, three starting pitchers to do it. Yeah, knowing that it may be your only year with Soto. It, and it, I, Just like the Padres knew it last year yeah. and, and spent way over the tax. Does that mean this is a good year to do that? I, I think you have to. And, and and spend and spend. But it's not like you're getting Blake for a one-year deal. No, There's no way no he's chance. signing that. He wants five. He wants six. six seven, yeah, 100%. And, and that's likely why no, no deal has gotten done yet yeah. with any team. All right, we are uh, done with two hours. Two hours still to go. When we come back, we uh, we do it every year around St. Patrick's Day, which is on Sunday. So we will celebrate, as we always do, with our favorite news story of all time. Coming up next with Bennett Woods on 97.3 The Ham.
Halfway home on a Friday, Friday. Ben and Woods, 97.3, the fan. Great to be here with all of you. Thanks for making us your uh, choice in the mornings. You guys definitely have. We definitely feel that. It is uh, it is a bit overwhelming at times, and um, I just can't thank you enough for it. It's been an incredible run, so it's uh, got to pinch myself a lot, and I have to pinch Ben again. No, 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 no. Yeah. You already pinched. Yeah. Oh. Get him. We reset the show, so I got to pinch him again. He did not wear green. Just never wants to play along uh, with our bits. But he's here. Ben Higgins is here. Paulie Rindle is here. Thanks for joining us. I would, frankly, you know how Adam always says I like I have to get out of here? I would like to stay and broadcast all day today. I'll stay till 6. This is uh, unusual for you. Yeah. If it would get me out of the oral surgery that I have uh, at 11 a.m. this morning, where they are going to be lengthening a tooth. I like a lot of things. I don't like oral surgery. No, I don't at all. I don't like getting my teeth clean. I don't like... For me, it's like... Never been a fan of was, going to the dentist. And they're usually such nice people no, there, my, too. Mine, Dr. Skeens, is the GOAT. He is, like, the best... Dr. Skeens? Yeah. Like he, Paul Skeens. Like Paul Skeens. Spelled, <laughs> spelled differently. Okay. But he's the best. But I do feel like sometimes when I go to the dentist... This is not on him. This is every dentist. When you go lay down in the chair, it is a bit of what happens to me sometimes when I get my car worked on, where they're like, oh, your defibrillator valve is your broken. What? Your defibrillator <laughs> is broken. We need to fix <laughs> that. Hard. I know I made it up. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They tell me something that exists when it does. I'm not saying he does that, but he's like, ooh, I see a little pocket there. We're going to want to do this, and you have to come back in. And, and he's not upcharging me. He just wants to make sure my teeth are dialed. So today, they're going to be lengthening a tooth. And the way that they do it, Ben, he showed me on this really fun, like, cartoonish video. <laughs> that was like, oh, it'll be easy. And there's just this thing grinding down like one a, of my like gums. S- like a Saturday morning yeah. schoolhouse yeah. rock like special. It, ma- it makes it look so fun <laughs> when you see it on the... I'm just, I'm just a, a tooth. <laughs> yeah. It makes it look like, oh, this will be great. This looks so, so fun. <laughs> Knowing full well, it's not going to be fun. Um, so that's today. So... If Adam needs me to stay, uh, no, the sound. I even if it's coming from another room, it completely wigs me out at the dentist. It's the sound. It's the sound. So that's and the today. smell. It's the very antiseptic, sanitary smell, but then the slight burning smell you yeah, get as well. That really, really, cool. really creeps me out. I am so sorry if anyone's on their way to the dentist this morning. This is well, just a I am bad. In, in two hours. Bad segment to be listening to right now, but I've always had a fear of the dentist, and they've always been so nice. I have the best dentists and hygienists over the years, and yet I dread it every time I have to go, even for a routine cleaning. Yeah, man. And, you know, we've advanced so far in technology uh, these days that it's weird to me that they're still using that little pickaxe to get in there and grind the tartar off your teeth. I'm like, is there not a rinse? Made of gasoline or something that I, I could have try. I have a lot of plaque and tartar. They have to go to town. And I go every six months, and yeah, they have too. to go to town on and me. Go, ur, 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 and you just lay there and go, please, God, let this in. And I'm a little sensitive, especially right in the right right below my right hair yeah. in the front. It makes so, you jump so a little. She'll even numb it up just a little bit, just with the, just with the gel, the, the not, gel. Not like an injection, just so it doesn't bother me as much. But mm, tough Yeah, one. so it's, uh, I'm just... I'm, it's tight. My bonch is a little bit swollen right now thinking about it because I don't like it. And, um, you know, so that's what that's what yeah. I'm going to do. Jocelyn, I clenched my butt cheek so tight in so the dentist tight. chair. Hey, they try to relax. Hey, would you like to listen to music? They have a White TV knuckles. screen up on the ceiling that you can watch and, like, take a nap. Enjoy. Take a nap. I mean, every second I am on edge just waiting for the worst to happen. And I'm afraid to wear my headphones and like listen to something else because I do like when he says to you, "Hey, don't we're almost done. A couple more minutes." That I need that reassurance like this is this torture is about to be But over. I always get the they they get like they're almost done and then they go back. Like, <laughs> "Oh no, I missed <laughs> Go back and no. Wait, you just did the bottom. Why are we going back to the bottom? I thought we were done with the bottom. Why are we back to the bottom again? Yeah, I know, man. I know. I um, I just don't like it. I don't like going, but I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it today. And uh, that's that's what I'm not looking forward to. On a Friday, I booked it. On a Friday, Friday. yes. Yeah. Such well, a, so unlike you. So he says it's going to be swollen. So I need the oh, weekend yeah, to, recover. Know, to recover. So on Monday, you're not mumbling <laughs> through the entire show. <laughs> exactly. All right, exactly. you did it for the show. I appreciate but, that. But you know it to make to help ease the the pain and the terror and anxiety that i have right now 
uh, we get to play our our the best thing that's ever made it to local news uh, by far. And uh, when was this video from? It's been around oh, it's forever. Been a long we play time. it every year. I don't year. know when it was officially when it officially aired, but this is uh, yeah. We go back to Mobile, Alabama. Yep, a big news story for them on St. Patrick's Day. Yep. Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community. Many of you bring binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. I got to do look up in the tree. Who else in the leprechaun say yeah? Yeah! yeah. Eyewitnesses say the leprechaun only comes out at night. <laughs> if you shine a light in its direction, it suddenly disappears. This amateur sketch <laughs> resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Others find it hard to believe and have come up with their own theories and explanations for the image. My theory is it's casting a shadow mm. yes. from the other limb. Could be a crackhead that got hold to the wrong stuff. And it told him to get up in a tree and play a leprechaun. We're going to get down to the bottom of this. That's my favorite. This man is wearing yes, full military there, gear. Yep. Bulletproof afraid, vest. Man. This guy helping to direct traffic <laughs> says guy. he's prepared for his encounter with the leprechaun. He's suited up from head to toe. This wars off spells right here. It's a this piece is of a pipe. special leprechaun flute. It's not been passed down from thousands of years thousands. ago from my great great grandfather who was Irish. <laughs> I just came to help out. Others just came to get lucky in hopes a pot of gold may be buried under this tree. I'm gonna run a backhoe and uproot that tree. I wanna know where to go. Like. I want to go. Give me the go. I want to go. <laughs> this is Brian Johnson, NBC 15 News. People will do anything <laughs> for a pot of gold. I mean, anything. You know what I like? I like the amateur sketch of the leprechaun. Yeah. Nothing somebody better. got a really good look at it and got that good drawing who, out Who there. did that? I want to know who sketched that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Brian. I, now, again, the Padres really screwed up a couple of years ago. What was their hashtag? Bring the gold? Should have been. Give me the gold. I want the gold. Not, no, it should have been. I want to know where the gold at. Give me the gold. I want the gold. It would have been very long for everyone to type out. Longest hashtag ever. Ever. But totally worth it. There's so much to love about it. Again, you Ben, you're in the business. So that story has to go through a couple of filters. I would imagine it does. Somebody doesn't need. Somebody doesn't go rogue. Yeah, I've. I've, I've... Given it some thought over the years, yeah. and two thousand six, and, by and, the way. I, and obviously there's an element of of some parody, and everyone's playing along. This is what amazes me that you've got this whole crowd; they're all having a good time, and I mean, legitimately, the Crichton community is having a great time with this, and obviously they're all being a little silly and having fun with it. And then the, the you know the news reporter jumped in and said, "Hey, if they're just going to be silly and have fun with we'll this, do it too. that's what we're going to do too. We're going to do the amateur sketch." We're going to interview people like this is serious, and it turned into really one of the great. It looks like if you had Taylor draw a leprechaun, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what the amateur sketch looks like. It's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> I mean, it, again, I'm going to call for more of this in local news. I would watch the news more if there oh, were more stories like this. Every night, I'd be locked in. But the um, the could be a crackhead got a hold of the wrong stuff. The wrong stuff, as opposed to the right crack. <laughs> <laughs> right? And the crack then made him want to be Could a leprechaun. Be a crackhead that got hold to the wrong stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Some really bunk crack. <laughs> and it made him, you know, do the opposite of what real good crack does. And he crawled up in a tree and is acting like a leprechaun. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. All you got to do is look up in a tree. Who else in the leprechaun say yeah? Yeah. What I need from Crichton. Uh, in the community is I need an update. I need a, a you know, it's been, what's 2000, what's 24 minus six, 18, 18, it's been 18 years since this air. Has he been seen since? I don't know if he's been seen or caught or did somebody find the gold moved out of Crichton? I want to know where to go. Like, I want to go. Give me the go. I want to go. I want to know where all these people are and how they're doing. And if, if I can, be of any service. <laughs> Maybe in two years, in the 20-year 20 20 anniversary, anniversary, they can do a uh, a look back at the great leprechaun sighting of 2006 in Mobile. And the guy in full camo that reached, looked around his yard and found just a piece of pipe and says, this is Drilled an, a couple of holes, couple holes in it. This is an ancient leprechaun, thousands, of, thousands years. of years old. We had another one. If you were just listening, if you were not watching on YouTube, he's like kind of brushing himself with it. He goes, this wards off spells. Wards off spells? Yeah. <laughs> 
It's such a good bit. Passed on in my family for generations. Thousands of years by my great-grandfather, who was Irish. And it is just my favorite, favorite thing ever. It just, oh, nothing man. makes me more happy uh, than the leprechaun bit. I will never not play it on the air. And there's still people that haven't heard it before. Uh, which blows my mind. Now, our boss, Adam Klug, is in the chat. He says, I'm sending Woods to Mobile oh. to track all these people down for a follow-up. In a New York minute, I would do that. In a in a second, I would do you it. You get there, and then you, we come start time, you have to start knocking on doors in the Creighton community and explaining <laughs> why you're there, and you you would chicken out. I would absolutely <laughs> do, would do it. Not oh, I would, ab- I would you'll, stop. You'll need to wear a 97.3 The Fan polo I will. while you're doing this as well. <laughs> I, first place I'd go is I'd go to a diner in Creighton, and I'd sit at the counter, and I'd order a delicious meal because you know it's delicious. And I would be like, does anybody know anyone that was involved in that? I'd, I'd talk to the news place first, ask them, have you guys done an update? Uh, I would love that investigative journalism. Uh, that would be something you could send me on. Uh, but I love it. I love it. We'll play it every single year. Uh, we got uh, our Tier 1 tour coming up, San Francisco Giants. Uh, their turn in the spotlight today. And Sammy Levitt joining us later this hour. We Hold did- on, Benjamin. Uh, Adam says play the rap remix. Have we ever played the rap remix, Polly? Do we know what that is? All right, Polly Polly will search for that. Maybe we can play that. He just posted it on YouTube. What, the rap remix? Apparently. Adam did? Yeah, why don't we give him a second? Uh, Polly can call it up during the break and we can bring it bring it back. I did uh, I did see yesterday that the uh, the Major League Baseball announced that the first pitch, the ceremonial first pitch for the Dodgers Padres series, gonna go to Chan Ho Park, which is a very political decision to make Chan Ho Park the first pitch tosser. Of course, longtime Dodgers pitcher, but also current Padres employee, special assistant to baseball operations uh, under A.J. Preller. So you've got someone who is maybe the most legendary baseball player from South Korea who has ties to both organizations, makes it kind of the no-brainer choice as your ceremonial first pitch to open the 2024 Major League Baseball season next week. He's rooting for the Padres, yes. I would think so. Yeah, would That's imagine. where it signs his checks right now. Yeah. I would, If he's not, then I don't want him working for the As Padres. As a special advisor. Yeah. You don't need any Dodger moles inside your organization. Yeah, as soon as we hire Matt Beatty as a hitting coach, then I'll be really, really concerned uh, about that. No, I, yeah, it, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's an easy pick. The very logical, easy pick. I think so. And give credit to A.J. Preller who has brought some of these people on board, you know, especially when it comes to the scouting in Asia, in Korea and Japan, and trying to find an edge there. I mean, you know, does it help to sign, uh, you know, guys like Usuk Go and before that Ha Sung Kim when you already have Koreans in your organization, you know, as part of the team? Absolutely. I would think that makes it, it much more comfortable, um, you know, and having you Darvish here, probably made it much more easy for Yuki Matsui to decide that he wanted to join the Padres. And, you know, hopefully uh, Roki Sasaki can be the same way if he ends up uh, coming out as a free agent next year. This is part of the the grand plan, as it were, of, of A.J. Preller. And one of the more successful parts of his plan that he's had over the last decade as general manager. All right, Paulie has found the rap remix, so I'd like to hear that. You want to do it now or Let's after the break? Now. All right, we'll do it now. To me, it look like a leprechaun to me. All you got to do is look up in the tree. Who else in the leprechaun? Say yeah! yeah! I don't want to know where to go. That is straight up phenomenal. Phenomenal. Wow. Woo. 
Jeff Gordon makes a good uh, point in the chat. This is probably more of a scouting trip for AJ than two game series. <laughs> That's not it's not the worst. He's doing uh, some work over there. There's no doubt about it. No doubt. That All was right, awesome. let's take time out. We'll come back. Our tier one tour continues on to the San Francisco Giants, another team that the Padres will likely have to beat out in the NL West if they have designs on at least a wild card playoff appearance a team that has made several moves this offseason uh, we will take a look at the giants coming up next with ben and woods after a check of traffic here on 97.3 the fan
We are down to just three teams left in our 29-team Tier 1 tour of Major League Baseball. Giants today, and then we've got the uh, Rockies and the Dodgers left. And then we are ready for the season to start on Wednesday morning. Today, though, the uh, San Francisco Giants, the team we are looking at last season, 79-83 and and finishing in fourth place in the National League West. Now, I went back and looked at this. I didn't remember. The Giants got off to a terrible start. They lost 13 of their first 19 games. And they looked like, as everyone expected, not going to be a very good season. And then they turned it on. And by the start of August, they got to 12 games above 500. They were 61 and 49 and solidly holding on to one of the, the playoff spots, wild card spots in the National League. But then a terrible final couple of months of the season and uh, fell below 500, fell below the Padres at the end of the year. Padres took three of their four series against the Giants last year and ended up once again being a bit of a disappointing year for the San Francisco Giants. Uh, And ultimately, they decided to make uh, some changes, and they've had a pretty active offseason here, Woods. Yeah, and I think uh, it, it didn't. It started out where I thought, oh, boy. Like we said last year, these guys are going to be major players for Shohei Otani. They're going to be major players for uh, most of the big free agents out there. And I think they were. I think they were probably used as leverage by a lot of players. And I, I know that uh, it hasn't gone exactly the way that they wanted to. But I thought I think they've done a pretty good job at addressing their needs, Benny, by adding Jorge. Jorge Soler, by adding Matt Chapman, uh, by adding Jung Ho Lee. That's three guys that are going to fit in there in the, the top of the order guy, middle of the order guy, and, you know, your six hole hitter with an outstanding glove at third base. They scare me. It, it's the Dodgers it, terrify me, but the Giants scare me. It's interesting because it's hard not to argue. The Giants got themselves better. They did. The question is how much, because the moves that they've made have also been some of the more head scratching ones. Now, I think if they had just gone out and gotten Otani sure. and Snell and done some frontline stuff, you would have said, boom, there it's, it's expensive, but it's done. Jung Ho Lee, while people are excited about him, everyone agreed. Maybe the biggest overpay of anyone this offseason. Well, at least overshot projection it could it could end up being a steal you know what i mean it, well, of just, course of course but you but when, when you're like clubbing aj preller with your offer like that's like 50 million more than even aj would <laughs> offer you've got to you got to question your evaluation well at that point. not knowing really much about him but i was like oh he'll be like he'll be like, make like six million bucks a year no i mean it, it went the, nuts. the other bit of a head scratcher um Jordan Hicks, uh, unbelievably electric arm, 105 miles an hour. But then the decision to convert him into a starting pitcher, and that certainly Interesting. Got, a, got a risk going to it. But they figure him to be kind of in the middle of their projected starting rotation, which uh, to me is not as good as it's been in past years. Uh, they still have Logan Webb, and they got their young prospect, Kyle Harrison, I love him. Uh, who's back and you know could be very good. But then after Hicks, it's a Keaton Wynn and... Uh, non-roster invitee Mason Black. They they seem to be lacking a little bit of pitching depth. Uh, they got Duvall, who's a really good closer for sure. It surprises me to no end that they haven't gone gone out and gotten Blake Snell. I thought it was almost uh, a guarantee. Now, well, but after spending so much on Lee yeah. and Chapman. Do they have the wherewithal to now go out and get a Blake Snell? I wonder how Giants fans really feel about Farhan. I think he he has saved his hide a little bit by going out and doing the deal for Matt Chapman and and obviously getting Solaire is a nice piece for them. He's going to hit a lot of bombs. It's a tough ballpark to hit. hit for a years ton he of home could runs. not go out and get the any of the big fish that they had their eyes yeah, on. Fangraphs hasn't projected for thirty home runs. That. That ballpark, that's like unheard of nowadays. Since since Barry Bonds' days, they, no one hits thirty. Yeah. No one really even hits twenty on that team anymore. It's that's it's a different brand of baseball. That, it that it they really have is to play. And um, I don't know, man. I mean, obviously they got Bob Melvin here uh, now, and and he's going to be look what you don't what you do. this seems to always happen. A uh, guy comes here. And then learns the valuable lessons of things that he did wrong. Goes somewhere. It happens. We heard it a thousand it's times. A, like it's a completely different team, though. I mean, no, no, it is. But you know what I'm saying? Like Bob Melvin reflecting on I, this is what I screwed up. This is what I screwed up. This is what I screwed right. up. I won't do that. But again. everybody does that. After I get it. A job where they're not successful. But literally, 
Sean Manaya, I just stopped working when I got to San Diego. I just kind of gave up and what and then uh, now I'm renewed. It just happens all the time and I I you know, you you worry about a uh pissed off inspired Bob Melvin certainly and but what what really can a manager do? These guys got to produce on the field and I do their lineup is certainly better this year than it was last year, but like you said, the pitching may have taken uh, a little step back and we'll see. You know, it'd be disingenuous. We were always pretty big fans of Bob Melvin. 100% even as things kind of fell apart last season. And it would be disingenuous to say the Giants made a huge mistake oh, in hiring right. Bob Melvin. It's not. It, it can't, it's not a huge mistake. He took the Padres to the National League Championship Series two years ago. Uh, and then the stories that have come out since he left about their, uh, their previous manager, uh, <laughs> you know, just some of the odd things that were going on with Gabe Kapler so odd. last season makes me wonder if there isn't some room for – much better team chemistry and, and much better team camaraderie under even Bob Melvin. And maybe his laid back style is something that they need in San Francisco right now. It's uh, it, there are veterans. It's not, this is not his Oakland A's team of just young guys trying to, you know, grind for trying a job, to grind yeah. for a job, but it's not also a Padres team. It's not superstar after superstar after superstar. He's got more of a middle ground here with this giants roster and, and we'll see how he does um, because he's competing now a very tough division. Ooh. Obviously, the Dodgers, you've got the defending nationally champion Diamondbacks, and all of a sudden, you have a Padres team that has seemingly awoken with a great spring, adding Dylan Cease now, you know, with the top, you know, top third rotation in baseball, a good bullpen, and superstars in the lineup. National League West is a hard place to thrive, and the Giants are kind of one of those teams that could go either way this year, in my mind. Yeah, the projections. Go figure. 82 and a half for the San Francisco Giants. Not, How much did the Padres projections go up? Yeah, they went Dylan up, I think, Cease. like four games or something. I'm not kidding. I, I'm, I need to go back well, and you know, look. He could be a 3-4 war pitcher, 100%. so that's, that's what that means, essentially. So uh, so now you, you the Padres are projected to win more games than the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, so 82 and a half. Look, again, this weird-ass Giants team that will go out and find a way to win 100 games somehow. Uh, it's not going to surprise me. Uh, if they also find a way to win 79 games, that's not going to surprise me either. 82 and a half is a really, really good number. I'm not, I would not bet. Stay that. away, Stay from, away that from that one. Yeah, 100%. All right. Uh, that's our look at the Giants, our tier one tour. A couple days left, and then we will wrap it up. Coming up next, though, he's getting ready for his uh, spring training debut play by play at the spring breakout game today. A uh, former minor league play by play announcer and now Padres pre and post game show host. Sam Levitt, we call him Spring Training Sammy. He's going to join us and play some Incorporator, whether he knows it or not. You need a next, word. Next with Ben Woods, we do, on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
8.37 in San Diego, 12.37 a.m. on Saturday in Korea. So hopefully everybody's uh, tucked in and safely in their hotel room beds. Or maybe they're out at a Korean nightclub right now. Oh, raging. I hope so. Good. Listening I hope to so, BTS actually. and just going strong into the night. I mean, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it early in the trip. Yeah. Before your body clock's kind of adjusted completely. And it did look like a lot of the Padres players were out uh, having a good time. I saw Scan experiencing some of the culture of Korea, some of the history, the, like the castles. It was pretty impressive, actually, uh, looking. Uh, as someone who's never been to Asia, I find it very fascinating. I'm glad so many people are taking advantage of this opportunity. You can look at it as a massive inconvenience to start the season, which it is. Or you can look at it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I assume the team that goes 0-2 is Can't going to look, true. <laughs> look at it as a massive inconvenience. And the team that goes 2-0 and is going to look at it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that they took advantage of. Or maybe they'll go 1-1 one and one and everyone will just be kind of fine with it and get on with the rest of the season. I mean, a split is ideal. <laughs> it's like, absolutely, you got to win one of those games, man. Whew. All right, uh, Sammy's standing by. We will uh, get the latest from Sam Levitt from Peoria, Arizona, where Dylan Cease... Made a brief appearance yesterday right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Well, the roads are looking pretty good around the county, definitely reflecting Friday light conditions. One problem to let you know about, though, this is a vehicle fire on northbound 15 past Friars Road. No flames seen, but it is smoking there. It's over the right shoulder, northbound side of the 15, just past Friars. I'm Kelly Danik with Bennett Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. And joining us one final time. From Peoria, Arizona. He's been there more than a month, live from Padre Spring Training, presented by your San Diego County Toyota Dealers Association. We make it easy. <clears throat> Sammy Spring Training, who uh, will graduate to regular season, Sammy, by the next time we see him. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, guys. Woodsy, you're already, did I, I mean, am I reading this right? Are you saying these two games in Korea, one of them is a must win? Yeah, must win. March? 100%. <laughs> okay. I mean, All you right. got, listen, you're coming back. You got Fan Fest. Nobody wants to see a Fan Fest with an 0 2 team after losing the. I mean, it just. I, I'll be there. I'll be working. You'll be there. We'll all be working. I'd love to see you find a way to scratch out a win in Korea. One on one feels much better. Feels yeah. much better. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. I, uh, obviously, it's not must win, but I agree. It would feel not so great <laughs> after last season coming home 0 and 2 and. That's the way you start the year before you even uh, see a pitch stateside. So I'm with you. Sammy, how lonely is it now in Peoria, Arizona, with so many of the guys gone? Obviously, there's still a ton of minor leaguers and things going mm -hmm. on, but the guys that you saw every day, Mike Schilt, coaches, most of the players, they've all packed up and left you behind. Yeah, I, I think you described it uh, well. It's, it's emptier in a sense because there's no more major league guys and there's certainly a lot less going on. There's a lot less media. Uh, it's a lot emptier on uh, sort of the administrative side of the building. But I was here for a little bit yesterday, and I'll tell you, there's still a lot going on baseball-wise. I think people need to remember how many minor leaguers arrive here for spring training. You have all four full season teams, you have guys beyond that, coaching staff, uh, coordinators, you name it. So there are still you know, hundreds of people uh, around this complex and, and tons going on on the mounds and the backfields. And I think people you know, sometimes don't realize that even while major league spring training is going on, as we get deeper into it, minor league spring training starts, which is really a separate thing. And they actually play uh, – teams from other organizations. So say the, uh, the high A team for the Padres, quote unquote, Fort Wayne will play the high A team from the Texas Rangers. And sometimes that'll be here in Peoria. Sometimes the Padres may go travel to surprise to do that. So there is uh, there are actual games that still go on here and, and uh, are pretty similar to what you see in the major league ballparks. Uh, and uh, so uh, a lot going on still and uh, plenty of people still here and, and all those minor leaguers, including a, a lot of, very highly touted guys like Ethan Salas and beyond, uh, they're here and they're still getting their work in and preparing for their minor league seasons to begin in a couple of weeks. Now, Sammy, you get to flex uh, some muscles that you haven't gotten to flex in quite a while today. Are you are you nervous uh, to do some play by play? I am not nervous at all. Oh, I love that. About like you. like riding a bike. I could wake up in the middle of December, get me in the booth, 
Here comes the pitch on the outside corner, strike one, and there we go. Do you have a signature well, home good. run call, or are you more uh, adaptable when uh, it comes to what you see in, in front of you? I I do not. Uh, I never have. Um, I always use the mix of it's gone, it's out of here. It depends. It depends on the the, the swing, uh, the ball, the moment, uh, the time of game. So I've never stuck to one thing, and we'll see what transpires today. We'll see if we I get a chance to, to call a home run, but – um, yeah, look, I, I, you know, obviously I think people know my background pretty well, and that's uh, three years of, of doing play-by-play in, in independent ball, two years at, at Corpus Christi at AA, and then three more years at AA in Amarillo. And a lot of those uh, games I was sitting in the booth alone, cranking out all night innings and, uh, you know, kind of putting in the work. So I'm excited for it and, and appreciative of the opportunity for sure. Well, we're, we're excited for you. Uh, ben, do you remember your home run? I do. Oh, I still I was just I, gonna I have you. a signature home run call. He I've made never, it up. He's never going to really use it. get to use it because I'm not a play by play announcer. It but, was pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, most. We did this most home run ago. calls, uh, you know, the signature comes at the end. Gonna go like Jesse Agler, Love Jesse. Uh, you know, or Don Orsillo, and it comes at the end. I thought. What about doing it differently and having the signature part be at the beginning? As a radio announcer, when there's a big play, you want to grab someone's attention. Baseball is that sport that you're kind of listening, but you're not listening. It's in the background, and you really want to grab someone in. So when someone hits one that you think has a really good chance, make the signature right at the beginning. So here's the 2-2 pitch, and he gives that one a ride to right field. And then you call from there what you see. Uh, you know, well, I, I think hot. let me let me let me let me demonstrate though the problem with that with starting it at the beginning. Not all home runs are equal, right? There's different kinds of home runs. There are ones that are no doubters. There are ones that are uh, you know high fly balls that just get out with a guy leaping at the fence. And I think you have to be able to. Well, I, I understand that. And if it's that. if it's a questionable one, I could be more like, oh, he gives that one a ride to center field, like more of a. Not sure about it, kind of call versus the no doubter okay. call. You can really express okay. that you, in your use voice. The inflection, yeah, yeah right, I, right in the look, inflection to really tell people what you're seeing. Don't steal this from me, yeah. though. This is my bit. The he, the the the, uh, the voice can be used as an instrument for sure, and you can tell a lot by the way you use your voice. I do want to say though, I I I love when guys have a signature call. I mean, Jesse is a great example with uh, his great gonna go call, gonna go. and I I I think um, look, I, I actually think that is really nice when you have one and you have one that sticks. And I think it really works when you're in the major leagues. Like, you know, if you're, if you're in independent ball, I was with the gateway Grizzlies, you're sitting in Soje, Illinois. <laughs> um, you know, are you at the point where you should have something yet? Like you're developing as a broadcaster. I, that, honestly, that's kind of the way I always felt about it. It's like, why don't, why don't we wait? You have to developing as a broadcaster. I'm almost yeah, 50 years yeah. old at this point. I don't know how much development I have left. I just need opportunity now. The boom goes. I always think of the boom goes the man dynamite boom guy. Goes the dynamite. That guy had nothing but bits. Ray instead Allen of, passes it to, to the man. man to the man. And, <laughs> to the man and, and boom, boom goes, goes the, the dynamite. dynamite. Now he had the. He worked backwards. He started, He worked bits. He, the substance was lacking, right? But he had all the bits in order. He was ready for boom goes the dynamite. You forgot your home run call. The one we did on the air at we our old the, station. Yeah, that's we exactly what I did on no, the air at the old it. station. It was yeah. Franchi Cordero, take your trot. Yeah, no, was that your, was the old one. That was your – oh, have you worked on a new one? No, well, I mean, that was I, – I, I've always incorporated the first part of that. But, yeah, take your trot. That was uh, I like that one, too. I haven't used that one in years, though. Have you used any have of them? Have you used in any? Years? In your, you when was the last time you did baseball play by I think delusional Ben is um, making an appearance on a Friday. Yeah. Ben Year. <laughs> so it's a game that jo- uh, Woods and I did with Jesse, did I think, was the head, last one. Like, you practiced, don't you? That was you? right before the pandemic. Do you like, practice? I, I haven't practiced in a while. I don't really have. Don't really have any cost to you at this point. But you have so many ideas. We got about Jesse, it. we got Sammy, we got all kinds of people. I'm. Yeah. Very low on the totem pole. Hey, uh, Sammy, oh, did you – you said you were at the complex yesterday. Did you run into Dylan Cease at all? I know he was there, but it seemed like he was there for a, a short period of time. Uh, yeah, from what I understand, he – and obviously there was video of it he threw. I'm not sure exactly what else he did. I did not see him here. Now, I came a little bit later than when I know he was out on the field, and um, – I believe he was at the complex while I was here. I don't know where exactly he was, what exactly he was doing. 
Um, I was, you know, sort of waiting here and seeing if I could see him, you know, maybe just introduce myself, whatever it might be. But I didn't, I didn't physically see him with my own two eyes. Obviously, he was here, and uh, as it's uh, been reported, sounds like he is on a flight to Korea, I think, right now. Maybe he's landed by now. Who knows? But, um, yeah, uh, good to see him here, obviously. Nice to see him in the brown and gold, and uh, we'll see what the, the plans are in the next week. Now, did you hear the uh, idea? I don't know if you were up early listening. Did you hear the idea that Adam uh, put in the chat this morning for you? Really good idea. No. Oh, what's that? Crap. Thought maybe you had already heard and been maybe massaged for a little bit. Adam wants you to do an incorporator today. It was his idea. <laughs> uh, sure. Oh, yeah. look at you. Oh, boy. All right. I got it's a unflappable. Word. He really He's is. An unflappable broadcast. He's like, I roll out of bed and can do play by play. I roll out of bed and I can do an incorporator too. Uh, so Jocelyn in the chat, I, I'm out of words. I'm, this is going to be a rough season for us and Jesse. <laughs> I'm completely out of ideas. I'm, 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 I'm cold. I'm like, spiritually maybe this is the bit to get more people to sign up for our youtube page if you want to submit a word that's YouTube. the place to do it for the incorporator this season so she said uh jocelyn suggested the word and it's a good one sammy teradiddle it is a noun it, it, say it again teradiddle it's a noun teradiddle teradiddle t-a-r-a-d-i-d-d-l-e it's weird that with a word with diddle in it teradiddle i'll be honest, okay. I'll be honest about that right not now. pterodactyl um, okay. Teradiddle. 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 And it just means uh, it's a petty lie. No sane person would make up such a teradiddle. And another example, the teradiddle from him about his new radio show. That's weird. <laughs> Pretentious nonsense. Uh, it is a noun, a petty lie. No sane person would make up such a teradiddle. So it's like a no, lie. No, I really okay. have a radio show. It's not a teradiddle. No, that's a teradiddle. I actually have a radio show. So Sammy's going to try to work that in today on the broadcast. They, you can thank Adam. Adam for the idea. Finally had a good one. Only 150 suggestions till we picked one that we liked. And uh, it was his idea. And, and thanks for being open to it. Okay, I will work it in, and I will let Paulie know where it is. You, you know right? how Jesse you? does it. He'll text seventh inning. There yeah, it was, there right it there. Now, Sammy, don't do this in your radio broadcast tonight, doing uh, play-by-play. I actually went through the archives. I, I guarantee you have not heard this, Sammy. This was back in February of 2020, our spring training trip. Uh, ben and Woods had a little booth takeover. Yeah, we joined did. Uh, Jesse Agler for a spring training game and had the mics and the headsets on. And I pulled this absolute gem. Woods hadn't really said more than three words hey, up until it. this point. Hey, He's a little bit down and away. Two balls and a strike. You want to call a pitch, by the way? You no, done I'm this. good. No, no, I'm straight. <laughs> I'm fine. One pitch. One pitch? Yeah, here, take it. All right, what's this guy's name? <laughs> Norhe <laughs> Ruiz. <laughs> and Norhe Ruiz into the set. Yeah, outside. Ball something. Ball three. Ball two. Ball three. Ball three. Ball three. Ball three and one. Very I nailed it. If you got if something happened to you both and I had to do this, there'd be no way. I, I'm very out. impressed your by score, both. Of your you. scorebook is not up to date in this game. I didn't keep a scorebook. I just <laughs> want radio. I just wanted to get it over with. I hated it every every second of it. Yeah, outside. Ball something. <laughs> I forgot that so one. So sports. <laughs> I hated it. Props to all of you that can do that, man. Holy. It is so, so hard. What's it is his name? so hard. Outside ball What's something. his name again? I just want, they when they pitched that idea, Sammy, I said, uh-uh. Most people would be like, oh, my God, what a dream come true. I was like, this is a nightmare. And I just did not want to do it. And uh, I'm so comfortable in here. I was not comfortable in there. Well, I I'll tell you what I would pay I would pay good money to have you like go sit in Midland, Texas, oh. you know, like a hot Sunday afternoon in July, uh. end of like a an eight game road trip, you know, and uh, and sit there for like four hours, fifteen, thirteen games, yeah. But it's I, just... I, I, don't, I something tells me something tells me I don't think you're I don't think you're, you're cut out for a lot of things I don't think that is one of them. <laughs> no, no, see, <laughs> this is this, somebody has a misperception of me. PMB says he's the kid in class that knows the answer but wants to fit in with the cool kids with their arms crossed in the back at school. No, uh -huh. it's really not who you guys know me. That's not who I am. If I'm comfortable, I'm going to give you 100. percent If I'm not comfortable. I, I am not comfortable. I did really well in school in the subjects I liked. I did really poorly in the subjects I didn't like. I'm the same way here. I'm the same way in life. <laughs> like, that's just who I am. Sammy, before you go, uh, what's your uh, – just give us a preview of the game today. I know Robbie Snelling's getting the start. What are we kind of expecting to see in this uh, prospect uh, showcase? 
Yeah, I, I think a, a couple of things really stand out. Obviously, the, the top of the top prospects will be in there. Ethan Salas, Leo DeVries, Robbie Snelling, Dylan Lesko, uh, Dylan Head, Homer Bush Jr. Uh, you know, the Padres uh, have their top guys out there. Now, there's been obviously some, some stuff going on with uh, Jackson Merrill on the roster, Graham Pauly on the roster, Eggy Rosario on the roster. They're all obviously in Korea. Then you had Cees and Iriarte taken off uh, from the Dylan Cease trade. But I think what's really exciting is that we'll also see some names that I think a lot of fans don't know about. You may have never heard of, and that includes some of the guys that were added uh, in the last uh, 24 to, to 48 hours. Uh, you know, Romeo Sanabria, Rosemond Verdugo. Uh, these are guys that have been at the, the lower levels that, that a lot of uh, – you know, a lot of fans probably don't know about, and I, I think it'll be cool to, to kind of be able to tell their stories and watch them uh, for the first time today. And same thing on the pitching side. I mean, some guys that um, have been at the lower levels who are a little bit on the younger side who we might see. So there should be a really good mix of the guys everybody knows about, Dallas, DeVries, and uh, Snelling, and, and the list goes on there. But also some names that are in, you know, the top 30 prospects, according to MLB.com. Uh, in the organization, and uh, but guys, you know that I, that I think most fans probably haven't heard of. And by the way, the Mariners roster is is really stacked as well. It's two really, really good rosters, and uh, should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Sammy, uh, good luck with the game this afternoon. Again, your incorporator word, teradiddle, teradiddle, and we will uh, we recap go. it on Monday uh, when you are back in San Diego. Have a safe Sammy, drive. Thank you so much thank back for joining well. us every single day, even in a shortened spring. You were there. You're a champ, and. Uh, we're going to run it back this season, Mondays, right? That's yeah. what we want to yeah. do again. Sounds good to me. I'm in. In season, I'm Sammy. In. The best. Best in the business. I'm in. Sammy Levitt. Kick some ass today, buddy. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, bud. Yeah, you'll be able to hear Sam Levitt right here on 97.3 The Fan, 1 o'clock. <laughs> Padres Mariners in the Spring Showcase Prospect Breakout Game today from the Peoria Sports Complex. Adam Klug should swell with pride every time Sammy is on these airwaves because Sammy has just been – he does it with a smile, which is the opposite of how I do it. He – is just so willing to help always. He's just incredible. You'd be so miserable God, after more than a month out there. I'd be more in a week. Paulie wanted to go for four days. I almost killed him. I was like, four, three's plenty. Like, that's all we need. A fourth day out there would have murdered me. So I uh, just really appreciate how, how he is. You need to you need that balance. You can't have everybody like me. And you can't have everybody like Sammy. Uh, but Sammy is is the best. Yeah, and I am definitely looking forward to some of his play by play this me afternoon too. as me well. Too. Are you gonna, you're going to be grading it though? I'd have a feeling. No, no. He Sammy. Sammy has lots of experience. He'll be he'll be excellent. He'll be excellent. Hmm. I don't know if I buy it. I still I don't either. They didn't give him now. They didn't give him a, a like a color commentator. He doesn't have a Tony solo, Gwynn Jr. Right? He's doing it solo. It's if you want to get out there quickly. Just to be some color for Sammy. I'm would, sure he'd appreciate I've done, that. I've only done three games play by play. Yeah. Uh Division One baseball. No color commentator. Had to do it the whole time. First first time it's, ever. Uh, physically it's taxing. I've played that audio. To talk for I three have, straight straight hours yeah. without anyone to, to bounce off even with commercial break. That is physically taxing, actually. All right, we've got one hour to go. Polly's gonna get some headlines for us in the Rydle Report. Going until 10 o'clock with Benna Woods on a Friday on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Oh, yes, you beautiful, magnificent human being, Paul Rindle. We've done this before. Well, it's been a while. You don't remember. (laughs) The great thing about growing old and losing your memory is that everything is fresh again and new, (laughs) even when you've heard it already. This is amazing. Paulie did play by play. Yeah, we've played it before. I have no recollection, so this is brand new to us. It's all new to me. Yeah, I, only have, I have two clips saved. Okay. Uh, this was, I'm trying to remember, this was probably 20, 2017 or 2018. Oh, little Pauly. Uh, so, yeah. 20, definitely can hear the, the youngness. The voice. Uh, and I was not doing this regularly. I'd never done it before. But How somebody, nervous were you? It, it, you have no idea. Vomiting I, in your I hand. I texted any and everybody I knew that had ever done play-by-play asking for some oh. some tips, some pointers, whatever I you could You didn't get. have to sprint up a s- giant staircase before doing the play-by-play. No, no luckily I did okay. not. Um, and right. so it was San Diego State <laughs> baseball. They're taking on New Mexico for a weekend series, and whoever the regular guy was at the time, he wasn't available. I think the backup wasn't available, so they asked. Could if have been Ello. Could it. have been anyone at this yeah. point. Yeah. And it was like, could have like, been hey, me. I did some games. You want to make 150 bucks a game? I'm like, done. Yeah. And I had um, it's a fun night out. I don't even know what you call it. like a spotter. Like I had a guy in the booth with me that was kind of handing me some cards and kind of pointing things out for me, but I did not have a color commentator. I had to do it all by myself. Oh, God, now man. it wasn't on the radio, and that's an important distinction to make. Yeah. Radio play by play, you have to really paint the picture of everything. No doubt. Television. This was on a little like, bit. Uh, uh, it was on mountainwest.com or okay. something. Yeah. yeah. So the internet. It was on video. So it was a little bit, you know, you can kind of let the video. Sure. Yeah. Video explain yeah, the picture, itself. tell the story. Some people will say, never describe what someone can see with their own yeah, eyes if right. you're doing a television or video stream broadcast. And like, you know, if it's on television, somebody hits a home run or something, let the, the video speak for itself, yeah. the audience, the, the, the crowd cheering. But sometimes you can do that. Took Fernando rounds third and met at the home plate with it by his teammates, whatever. So uh, here is, I got two clips. Here's an RBI double. Oh, boy. Full count here. Gasser throws. Runners going in. This ball is lined into left field. That's, That's going to score. That's going to get through it's the gap. That's going to score two. <laughs> as Escobedo is going to stop at second base, but not before he brings in two runs. Okay. And San Diego State has cut the Lobos lead in half. Not bad, a little, no, not bad, a little yeah. choppy, yeah, but little, I think that's yeah. to be yeah, that, expected. A little stop and start game. there, but no. Well, it's like it, you know, I think I remember it was like a double in the left field gap, so you're like turning your head this way, but then you got to see who's scoring, how many came around to score. It's not easy, dude. Where did the throw go? You really it's need really to have tough. your focus in two places at once, yeah. which is one of the tricky and parts. We don't, we didn't have like you go up to Jesse and Tony's booth; they got three different monitors, monitors. right in front of them, yeah. so they can get the close up view. They can read what's happening in front of it's them. It's the in high the voice that kills me. It, it's the, you know, in a lot of ways it's like driving a car yeah you gotta be <laughs> and like, you gotta swivel. you gotta have your rear view you gotta have your eyes rear view mirror checking all over the place and you have to still be steering and doing everything at the same time you have to be talking while thinking about what's going on in other places it's managing a lot of different things at once yeah and then we have a uh just says nice catch oh <laughs> Nice catch. Two and one is the count. The infield is in, and here's the pitch. And this ball is roped into left center field, and that is going to be caught. A heck of a catch by center fielder Julian Escobedo. Escobedo was a good play. Heck of a catch. He was a really good catch. Heck of a catch. So I watched last night. um, Our buddy Jackie texted me and said, hey, for the kids, if they're interested, Savannah Bananas are doing a live YouTube thing right now. And it's it's tough to watch it on YouTube. They have like one camera. It looks like a minor league game. And those even those announcers, it's it's tough. Uh it's tough. Now that's a different thing entirely. They have to be full of energy and you know, doing bits and stuff, but that is not an easy thing to do. It is not easy at all. Um I do think baseball, if I had to pick any sport to do play by play though, it'd be baseball. Yeah. Maybe I know the sport the best. I, I know the best but too, but it's still hard. It's basketball. So hard. Fast paced. They're, they're of, hard in different movement. ways. Baseball is hard because of the slowness sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, have drags. more stories that you've got to tell to fill times. You have to be more of a host sometimes than a play by play announcer. Now, to me, the hardest by far hockey. would be hockey. There's no doubt. Oh, yeah. Craig was so, Greg Elson was such a beast. Hockey play-by-play. is insanely difficult because of the track speed. The puck. I can't even, I have no idea where it is. Football, then, I, football actually might be the easiest yeah. in that there's yeah. a reset on every play. It's uh, it's very formulaic on what's happening, and then you've got, you know, and then ten seconds, fifteen seconds to break it down, and then you start over again yeah. with the same. All right, now it's second and seven from point. the twenty-seven yard line. 
you really have to do it that way. There's no other. There's really no other formula for calling a football game. You know, I do PA for the Seals, and uh, I blew for the first time ever last week. I blew the intros, the player intros. I, I skipped a guy, Uh-oh. and oh, that throws everything, everything into a obli- like your video just, crew, everything. I'm, and then I start pouring sweat, and I missed our, our buddy Matt Sykes, uh, and I'm I completely bricked it. <laughs> so one guy's running out. I'm calling another guy's name. It was oh, horrible. Yeah. The rest of the Hor- order, yeah, it's completely jacked. Had to get it back on track. <laughs> you feel like a moron, a moron. So it happens. It's very tough. Anything with a microphone in front of you is not as easy as it looks. Sometimes. Uh, are we doing? Somebody called you Polly Scully in there. I think it's a high compliment. Yeah, uh, Polly Scully. A little bit. And Dodger by himself. A little I like bit. It. Yeah, that's fair. We are doing the Rhino Report. All right, let's do is, it. Uh, next. And get things started here with our. Edition, today's edition oh, of boy. the Rindle Report. Now tuned into the motherfucking greatest. Welcome to the Rindle Report with Paul Rindle. Hi, Paul. All right. Two stories from the world of sports that we haven't gotten to yet. We'll start off in Major League Baseball. And one story that you didn't know you needed. Are you laughing, Biot? It's the Rindle Report. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Okay, how are you? On 97.3 The Fan. Are you ready to bless the mood? I need some help, please. <laughs> that was good. Can I get a hoi? All right. All right. All right. Gentlemen, we will start off with the local news here. San Diego Wave FC reportedly being sold. And I saw that this could, if it comes down as reported, will be a, not just a record breaker, I mean, record shattering sale price in the uh, NWSL. So Ron Burkle, the current owner, is apparently selling the club in a two-part deal that could reportedly, according to ESPN, this is Jeff Carlisle, their U.S. soccer guy, uh, place the transaction at $120 million. I don't know how much he's fully invested in the team, Ron Burkle has, but it, it says he paid a $2 million expansion fee. Okay. And then I imagine you have to, you know... Startup costs. Startup costs yeah, to put the team million, together, sure, salary yeah. and all that, but... Um, nice profit, though. The previous record in the NWSL for a franchise being sold was $63 million. Oh, okay. So almost, that. almost double. Well, and, and the Wave have been phenomenally successful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have become, in a couple of years, essentially the premier franchise of the NWSL with state you know attendance records, playing at Snapdragon, which, as everyone says, probably the best soccer stadium now in the NWSL. Uh, they've really gone up with you know Portland and, and a couple of the other teams to be right at the top. And now, does this mean anything? Is this any okay, cause so, for concern? So I, I saw some people a little bit worried because I tweeted about it. The Wave aren't going anywhere. They're, they'd be insane to go away sure. from, from sold-out stadiums. They are here to stay. They're a San Diego team. The couple who is buying the team, they're a Beverly Hills-based equity, private equity power couple. They probably, from Los babys- Angeles. they probably babysat you as a kid, if we're being honest. <laughs> Possibly. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> so they have ties with Jill Ellis, the team president. When right. she was at UCLA, they were like big UCLA donors and supporters of hers. So I guess they go way back. Uh, they're not going anywhere. And, you know, I would assume. Will they, will they continue to. That's the thing. When anytime you sell a franchise, like when the Orioles were like, we're selling our franchise, universally it was like. Yes, Thank you God. cannot do Finally. worse than than the Angelos or whatever the Angelos. The family. only concern is, you know, things have gone so well so far that there's really not much room to go up, and you worry that you know well, change could be bad sure. for the San Diego Wave. Right. But I'm not, I'm not overly concerned at the moment. Plus, uh, Burkle's going to still own the team for this next season. Okay, it's, they're only buying thirty percent, and then they'll buy the rest of it for the 2025 season. All right. All right, next up, where are we going here? College football. Uh, Big news, possibly coming later today as the college football playoff committee is getting ready to finalize plans for a 14-team playoff. Because the 12-team playoff has gone so well (laughs) so far. We've really... We've really enjoyed the 12 really team playoff great. that they implemented 15 it. minutes ago. <laughs> no. 15 minutes ago. Hey, 12's good. Have yet to play have one we, edition of the 12 team playoff. Have we thought about 14? You know, let's just make it 16. 18? 20. 23. 23. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> really so weird. Throw a wrench in there. Back yeah. to four. Uh, so, yeah, we have not gotten to the 12 team expanded playoff. And now playoff we're going yet. for 14. In 2026, they are looking to expand already to 14 teams. <sighs> 
I was good. I, I was always a big advocate for eight. Eight. I thought eight, eight was right. It would be nice. Uh, you know, good opportunities. More is, is good, though, in terms of opportunities for teams like the Mountain West champion. They, they will get in in a 14-team playoff, the, the best group of five winner. I know there I was actually some, like 16 teams. Honestly. I know there was some big controversy, though, because in that 14-team format, they wanted to give an automatic buy to the SEC and Big Ten champs. And the other conferences were like, dude, we exist. <laughs> like, the ACC, we're still here. But the Big 12 is like, I, I mean, if our team is better than their teams, we should get the buy. It shouldn't just automatically go to the SEC and Big Ten champ every single year. Now, it probably would is still end up going to those teams, but you can't just say before the season even starts, well, we know that you are the best two conferences, so you automatically get the buy in the first round of the playoffs. That doesn't seem fair in how, the spirit how, of sports. How is this being structured, have they said, as far as at large? Yeah, two, and it, two, buys, two buys. So then the other 12 teams will play, and then but when wait. they play, there will be six left that join the two buys, and then there'll from be eight. How many from each? How many conferences are there going to be now? There'll be four, four power conferences. Four power conferences. Yes. The champs all get in. And then the best group of five champs, or either the Mountain West or the American Athletic Conference champion. And either then there or, be, or both. Then there would be nine other spots. Likely three more Big Ten teams, three more SEC teams, and, and maybe like one or two other a, uh, ACC and Big 12 teams that get in. But there'd be like a committee and a, a way to decide who the top 14. Top two would get buys. The other 12 would play. Six advance. And then you'd have eight left. And then you've got... Eight to four, four to two, two to one, yep. like a quarterfinal, semifinal, mm. and final. I mean, I love college football playoffs, so I'm in. What does it mean for my beloved like, Irish? Is this good or bad, the expansion? Probably good, right? I mean, be I'm in the top 14, and it's good. Yeah. Be out of the top 14, and it would be bad. Yeah, but then the it wouldn't Irish. matter. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. Wouldn't matter I don't way. know that they're getting an automatic berth right, because they don't, they don't have, have anything to win, yep. so you could say maybe that's bad, but... Generally, already going to be the generally case. they're in the top like, 14. I don't need 32 or 64 teams like in basketball, no. but 14, 16, fine. Because mm. I think college bowl games now are the worst part it's of the, the season. the worst part of the season. and It when, only comes down to the final, you know, New Year's Day, and weekend. Nobody wants to play in them, and it's just it's horrendous. So you can get rid of that three By the way, any college gap. bowl directors who happen to be tier ones listening, we still <laughs> love you. Yes, but <laughs> we still want the better ones. Well, being bowl. honest, yeah. If I mean, get the better. I like the bowl, idea we'll of playing the bowl games at the beginning of the season. 100%. That was what Mark Neville that. told me. Like, I love let's that. do it at the beginning of the year. Have a really cool game to start the year, and call that the bowl game. And then the playoffs can come at the end of the season. Yep. All right. Finally, uh, Frontier Airlines is launching something new that I think everybody can get on board with. Ben so. won't, but I am all in. Yeah, that's you, true. this is this was made for rubes like me. They are adding a new yes. seating option on Frontier Airlines. It's called Upfront Plus, mm. and what that does is. It's not a new concept, but it kind of is. It's going to guarantee that the middle seat in your row is empty. Now, you could already do that and just pay for two seats. It's more expensive But than it is this. a lot more expensive. Now, I assume this is only when the flight is not totally booked. Yeah. It says you can do it. You cannot do it in any row. It's only going to be in the first two rows of the plane. That's why they call it up front plus. But they are experimenting with this. They want to see how people like it and if it's popular which i think it will be there's an, it's there's no question now it's gonna cost they haven't really they kind of have an introductory price right now it's gonna be 49 bucks sold and that goes through next wednesday you can get those prices travel has to be between april 10th and april 30th so it's just a short short little bit introductory okay. sample size here uh 49 bucks each way if you want that middle seat to be unoccupied 100 bucks and then you're you there's nobody leaning over onto you Nobody you have to, you know, scuttle by as you're on your way to the bathroom. No, Nobody hogging the, the divider between you. I'll pass. Why? Shocker. Too steep for well, you? Well, first of all, it's Frontier, which is not great. There's nothing wrong with Frontier. There's a little bit. It's Spirit Sometimes plus. you got to fly Frontier. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. No. It's, it's not bad. It's not even it's as not good spirit. as Southwest. It's, no. it's, it's way worse than Southwest. So, it's way better than Southwest. 
having the seat next to you doesn't solve the leg room issue, though. No, but it so it solves the, it does. Mm-hmm. Actually, you can, you can, spread, you can out. spread out a little bit more, but my knees still hit the back of the you chair no matter what. You flip up that armrest and just turn your body a little bit. And I also I already have my Southwest strategy that works surprisingly often. So here's what I do. Make sure you, you you get the 24 hours so you get a fairly decent boarding number. That's garbage. That never works. I no, still get no. D and E. No, no, I check I, in I, I, I get, on the check check in on like, I get like A28 or B3. Liar. I get You're on lying. Or, So it doesn't matter, though. So you get in line, and then me being a big guy, I walk onto the plane. And a lot of people like the aisle seat. I like the window seat, though. So generally, when you get on the plane, there will be some early rows where someone's already sitting in the aisle. I will pick the biggest... Like, I will look for the biggest guy who's sitting on the aisle, and then I will take the window seat in that aisle. And if it's not a full flight, no one wants Nobody. to sit between two giant guys. No. So they will pass up that middle seat until the plane is, if it's not completely full, it generally will end up being the seat that is not taken in between the two of us on that Southwest flight. Boom. Now, here's my only concern with the uh, Frontier option, the Upfront Plus. You're charging uh, an extra 49 bucks on your flight. To have that middle seat unoccupied. Let's say you're flying solo, right? I'm flying on flying to wherever. I pay for that forty nine dollars. The middle seat is unoccupied. Who's the jabroni sitting on the aisle? If I'm on the window, he's benefiting from my forty nine dollars because he also has that middle seat unoccupied. That's now. A good point. Who actually? Covers I think you got to split cost. it. You mean, hey, buddy, uh, don't lean over into this seat, or else you better Venmo me twenty five <laughs> bucks. That's a good point. That is a good point. Other, right. other points that are being made. Uh, John says, stop losing weight, Ben, so you can keep up with that strategy. Yeah. The backfire is if the plane is completely full and the last guy to get on is a huge guy, then we've got three huge guys all right next to each other. It's absolutely that, terrible. Which has happened once or twice, which is terrible. But if it's a full flight, it's a full flight, and you're not going to have an empty seat next to you no matter what. So there's my strategy for you, getting an empty seat you, next I've, to me. I've, I've, I've done the thing where I checked in for my flight, and they're like, hey, if you want to upgrade, for it, I'm done. Anytime I get a chance to upgrade and for a better experience in the air, I will do it. So you got me, Frontier. Well done. I always feel like it's probably two and a half hours of your life. Just get through it. Of get off do. the plane. There's no reason to spend extra money on that. I like comfort. I'm, I'm the opposite. I just want to get there. I like comfort. I want to get there and get there. I want to get there in style. It's not really style, though. <laughs> You're still sitting in a really <laughs> fabricy old seat yeah. with a plasticky tray table in front of you. It's never going to be stylish. Sorry. I'm not surprised that you're not laying out the 49. <laughs> really, really not surprised at all. All right, we'll come back. Uh, we've got a couple of segments left. I want to look ahead. Tonight, you've got another San Diego State game. Big one against Utah State in the semifinals of the Mountain West Tournament. Got a lineup out, Benny, for the uh, spring breakout game. Excellent. We'll get to that as well coming up after a check of traffic here. Ben Woods on 97.3 The Fan.
We had some uh, eventful couple of minutes where uh, two goats, one from the world of football, retires, Man. and a goat from the world of lacrosse unretires oh all God. in the last couple of minutes. Let's start with the uh, the lacrosse, one of the goats from the San Diego Seals. The captain, Brody Merrill, who retired last year, yeah. has uh, has suddenly unretired and has been moved from the retired list to the active list. Now, Woods, did you... Did you get a heads up on this as an employee of the Seals? I did not, man. We've had Brody on. You know Brody. Brody is... Patrick, his brother, is the coach. Brody is like my one of my favorite athletes I've ever gotten to meet and cover and get to know. He is a, uh exemplary human being and captain. Um, and I'm so happy that he's coming back. I, I was the one. I did this. I, got, I was like the Don Orsillo of the Seals. I got to go to the podium with our owner and the whole thing and retire. We hung his number in the in the rafters and everything. And Pull now, it down. Now he's coming back. Pull that number down. He's going to need it still. And I'm so excited. And, and you've got uh, a game. It's uh, They're on the road this week. They're on the road this week. Yeah. Next week uh, is going to be incredible. It's Military Appreciation Night. And Brett Michaels will be performing after the uh, show. So I am, I'm elated. Elated for next week. Do we want to mention what might happen next week as well? Or yeah, we're uh, going to have Brett Michaels on the show. Brett Michaels, the poison artist. Correct. Finally. Brett Michaels. Finally. Talked don't about it say a word. I've got it. I, you, you don't want me to like ask mm-hmm. questions? I don't want you to embarrass me in front of him. He's very important. Do you want me to read poison lyrics to him no, somehow? I just don't like want that? you to embarrass me. <laughs> Actually, not the worst idea. Will you run your questions by me before? No. Uh, uh, why don't you just give, why don't you write down what questions I'm allowed okay, to ask? Okay, I How will. About that? I'll write your questions you. For can you can script my entire okay. appearance with Can Brett I ask Michaels. him questions about Rock of Love? Um, hmm, sure. <laughs> I've never seen it. What? I never watched it. So you had the, uh, the, the lacrosse goat is coming back, one of the goats, and one of the goats of the NFL, one of the greatest defensive players of all time, Ever. is calling it a career is wow. Aaron Donald, L.A. Rams legend, three times defensive player of the year, eight-time first-team All-Pro, Pro Bowler in all ten of his seasons, Damn. has announced his retirement uh, from the Los Angeles Rams. So that was big news breaking in the NFL this morning. There's also some big news, uh, other L.A. football news last night. You see the Chargers traded Keenan Allen they did, man. to the Chicago Bears for a fourth-round draft pick. Keenan Allen had a phenomenal season last year with uh, Justin Herbert throwing him passes, but he was unwilling to take a pay cut to help the Chargers get under the salary cap. Why would he? He just had a phenomenal season. Why would he take a pay cut? He said no, and they said, well, I guess we're going to have to trade you. So Where'd he go? uh, Chicago, the Bears. So either he'll have Caleb or Justin Justin throwing passes to him. We don't know which at this point. Uh, but they also had to release Mike Williams, longtime receiver. He went to the Chiefs. Uh, did he already sign with the Chiefs? I know they got I Hollywood I Brown. The Chiefs. the Chiefs got Hollywood Brown. Chiefs got for Hollywood a Brown. Yep, I saw that. But so the Chargers have a real wide receiver issue. They took that uh, what Quentin Johnston last year. We had a terrible rookie season. Just what Justin Herbert wants to see. And now the they they've assigned a new running back in Gus Edwards and a tight end in Will Disley, who's a blocker. They're just turning into a running team. And Justin Herbert's going to be an afterthought under Jim Harbaugh's new program. But uh, by the way, the trade of Keenan Allen, if you care, leaves only one player left who ever suited up for the San Diego Chargers. Crazy, man. On that roster. Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa. Who was a rookie in 2016, the final season they played here in San Diego. And that is just one player away. That is it. The last connection on the field to San Diego. I thought I saw Mike Chargers. Williams go to the Chiefs, but I guess he not. may have. I know they they the Chargers released him. I mean there's so many you can't keep track I of all the moves in track. the NFL. It's it's like impossible the way they do it. It's we say, "Oh, we wish the Major League Baseball would do this," but we our heads would spin if it went this fast. It's like is there a middle ground where like every day like three guys can sign and then we can talk about it the next day and then the next day three more guys can sign because having 70 guys all sign in a day doesn't do us any good for an off season of talking baseball. Mm-hmm. I would like to spread it out a little bit, but it also is silly that Blake Snell and other players are still unsigned here as we're ready to start the season. Interesting. Yeah, I, mean, I guess he hasn't signed yet. True Tranquil, I guess, posted something about Mike Williams should come get a ring. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Patrick, you know, wants all the help he can get. Hollywood Browns, a nice, interesting pickup for them. Um, but yeah, this is a weird, that's a weird thing, man. Keenan Allen is 
really, really good player. Really good player. Like you said, had a monster year uh, last year. And having to go to that guy and ask him to, hey, any chance you could? No, absolutely not. Absolutely Feels like it's asking not. Tommy Pham to take a pay cut. It's just it's not, not going to happen. No. He's got a good opinion of himself. He's had a good season. Why should he have to take a pay cut? It's asking Ben Higgins to take a pay cut. True, true enough. You know what I mean? All right, uh, let's hold on. We got the lineup. Uh, we'll do that when we come back for the spring breakout game for the Padres. Uh, next with Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Oh, yes.
Make sure you tune in every Thursday, start, starting uh, in two weeks, I believe, or three, we- three weeks, for our 10 a.m. 97.3 The Fan commercial-free Padres Roundtable featuring Ben and Woods, Annie and L, student Gwen and Chris, presented by San Diego Roundtable Pizza. Had our first one yesterday. It went very well. I thought so, too. I enjoyed it. For takeout or delivery, go to roundtablepizza.com. Roundtable, the last honest pizza. Yeah, no no round table the next two weeks because we've got Korea and opening day. Yeah. But then we will have them weekly for you throughout the season. Thursdays, ten AM. Although there was discussion after the show of moving it to nine thirty, so it would be half of our half hour and half of Annie and Elston's. I mean half Adam's hour. Adam's whole like principle, he is he's what he said to me a thousand times. I have to keep it fair. Okay. That sounds massively fair. Doesn't that sound fair? More fair than it that. is now. Very fair. But I did have a good time yesterday directing traffic. Yeah, and I did. Moderating and, and talking to everybody. So and I hope everybody that listened uh, enjoyed our first commercial-free Padres Roundtable presented by San Diego Roundtable Pizza. Lineup is in for this afternoon's... Out. Spring breakout. It's also out. It works both ways. It's in and it's out <laughs> for the breakout game. It's not the break-in game. That would be a crime. <laughs> uh, the starting lineup for the Padres, uh, Jacob Marcy will lead off and play center field. Marcus Castagnon, the third baseman, batting second. Ethan Salas behind Ooh, the plate, mama. hitting third. Nathan Martarella will bat clean up and play first base. Homer Bush Jr. is batting fifth out in right field. Dylan Ahead in left field, batting sixth. Then it's um, Romeo Santabria, who uh, Sammy mentioned when we had him on earlier as the designated hitter, batting seventh. Leonardo de Ries is the shortstop, batting eighth. And Rosman Verdugo will be the second baseman for the Padres, batting ninth, with Robbie Snelling making the start uh, today against the Seattle Mariners team of prospects at the Peoria Sports Complex. And again, you can hear that game. Right here on 97.3 The Fan with Sammy Levitt on the call at 1.10 this afternoon. I'll probably be coming out of my dental haze right around then. So go home and listen to it on my phone. Listen to our beloved Sammy. Uh, get some work in. I love, look at these guys. I yeah, mean, don't these know are... a ton about Santa Bria or Castagnon. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, these are the guys we've been mostly hearing about all camp long. Uh, the only thing I would have done is I would have flipped head and bush. That's it. And you would have gone head, then bush. Yeah, always. Bush, Not, bush, 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 yeah, bush. That's it. Not bush, then head. Right. That, that's just one small tweak. Yeah, I think I... Yeah. Head first, then bush. Yeah, for sure. Well, we don't even know who's managing. or I assume A.J. Preller probably made the lineup out, just handed it to someone. Probably. <laughs> before he left. I, but I don't know who's actually who managing this managing game. managing that game? Is it like Could Philip go, Yeah, Lowell probably like something? one of the minor league skippers would yeah. be my guess because the major league coaches are obviously all out in Korea, which is, um, yeah, re- the rest of the teams are also doing these prospect games around baseball. It's a, a feature of spring training that they've added. Several of them are on uh, national television as well. I was trying to well. flip back and forth yesterday. I wanted to see uh, Paul Skeens versus Jackson Holiday on MLB Network, but it's right in the middle of the Aztec. I saw a lot of Skeens uh, social media posts, though, and how my, uh, hard he threw and how accurately my God. he threw for the Pittsburgh Pirates yesterday. I mean, I, there's a, there is a, uh, a desire. And if you're a Pittsburgh Pirates fan, you're like, call him up. Call him up now. He has thrown... All of six innings or eight innings in professional baseball or something. They were talking about him on MLB Network last night. And they said, yeah, send him down, give him two starts, then move him up to another level, give him two starts, and then call him up to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Like, there is no reason this kid needs to be down there. He is all over the plate. He is insanely dynamic and electric. And uh, what a treat to watch him pitch. And you have to always question the motivation of a team of and course. whether or not this they're manipulating the clock and not starting the service time clock. It's to, nice to not have to worry about that here. It is it one really thing. Is, that, there's two things. Arbitration yeah. and service time manipulation are two things that A.J. Preller has decided conscious, consciously. Yeah, Jackson Merrill could easily, they could send him down for a month just to make sure that they dude. could keep him for another year. Bro, in could a have heartbeat. done with it. Tatis, they did not now, do it. Some people might say, well, that's actually smart baseball. But 
you know, I, I, I disagree. If somebody's ready, they'll let you know they're ready and they're ready. And we've seen it so many times in the game. Chris Bryant obviously being the most glaring example. Uh, the Cubs sending him down, incensing Scott Boris and every Cub fan, you know, in, in attendance and uh, in existence at the time. But the Padres just don't do that. Um, and I think I like that. I really do. I like that because if a guy's ready to go, he's ready to go. Um, before we check traffic, I just wanted to throw in one thing that I didn't mention yesterday. We're on for five hours, and I wanted to mention it after the the Dylan Cease trade, and it just struck me that that move was something that Peter Seidler would have really enjoyed. I believe so. Yeah. Right before the season, 100%. something like he's looking and. Going, all right, here we go. Dylan Cease, let's go for this thing. And it, it made me smile yesterday to think about Peter and how much he would have been excited about that move for his team on the eve of you know the regular season getting started, adding an ace-type pitcher and just ramping up the excitement at Petco Park once again for the start of the 2024 season. And we didn't bring up Peter yesterday, and I felt bad about it later, and I wanted to mention it today. Crazy how much that move did to uh, excite this fan base yeah. again. It really did. The owner who was the king of exciting moves. Yeah. Uh, you know, during his tenure with the Padres. Yep. So, yeah, that was a good move yesterday. All right, let's check traffic. Come back, uh, get you ready. Get another uh, big day of college basketball today. It's championship week. Uh, and then we will get some things Ben likes and wrap up the show here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Got a few things revving up our morning drive. One of them is this stall vehicle on the coastline, northbound 5 before Delmar Heights Road. It's over the right shoulder of the HLV lane, southbound at 5 before Claremont Drive, a crash being moved over to the right shoulder. Also, westbound 8 for the 805 stall car over to the right shoulder. Collision on westbound King Freeway just before the 805. Those vehicles are in the center divide. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, the fan. All right, two semifinals in the Mountain West tonight. The Aztecs get to play in the first one, uh, fifth seed in the tournament, but actually favored by the odds makers tonight against conference champion Utah State, which goes to show you how evenly matched really the top seven teams in the Mountain West were all season long. That you can have the five seed on a neutral court be favored by what, three and a half points? Is it? I think it was four and a four half, and a half, half points over the conference was, champion. That was the line yesterday, and they did not cover. So. Uh, I believe that's. Uh, I'll double check see if it's moved. That's here. scheduled for six thirty, and then the the second game is actually I I would say the more important game when it comes to the NCAA tournament. It's going to be New Mexico against Colorado State, and I was looking at the uh, bracketology this morning. Latest update from Joe Lunardi, and he has State favored four and a half points. He has New Mexico as his first team out number 69 on the list as it were and if you want to uh, feel good about the Lobos getting in and the Mountain West getting six teams very important game for them tonight against Colorado State in the semifinals of course any team that wins the whole thing can automatically punch their ticket I also thought it was interesting he's got San Diego State on the five seed line I know Jerry Palm who uh, Chris Ello had on yesterday um, he they had him on the six seed line but then they won yesterday, so I don't know if Jerry moved him up. But G Lunardi has him as a five seed. And crazily, the matchup that he has them going up against the 12 seed, Grand Canyon oh, University. Oh, man. One of the teams Bad that memories. beat San Diego yep. State. Of course, that was you know in that insane gym in Phoenix where they play. You With not, all that free pizza yeah, and all you that. You would yeah. not have to face that similar kind of environment in a neutral side NCAA tournament game. I don't know if the Aztecs would love that rematch or not like that rematch, but... And rarely do the exact matchups come to play. Yeah. You know, is, bracketology, if you get like 67 of the 68 teams, you're happy. It doesn't matter if any of them are actually the right matchups that you pick. Those That rarely happens. What time do the Aztecs play? I think it's 6.30 oh, tonight it's decent, is the first. Decent the little day of sports. Here yeah, in, I mean, TV. the TV city. matchups are always weird because the second game doesn't even start until 9, which is why it's an advantage because the championship game tomorrow – if they win, is at 3 o'clock. Yeah, a little so, early. So the second semifinalists, you know, the game usually starts a little late. I mean, it could be overtime, whatever. They might not be done with their game midnight. until 1130 to midnight. <laughs> Shower, get back to whatever hotel, you know, Orleans or whatever you're staying at. And then you got to get up in the morning. you got a game at 3 o'clock. That's a really tough turnaround. And one of the reasons I actually do kind of like the Aztecs in the game today is that 
Utah State has been great, but they're not the deepest team in the Mountain West. I think they usually only run at a couple of subs regularly. Much harder for them to play three games in three days. They also played an overtime game yesterday, and while the Aztecs did too, and then, you know, Jaden Ledee took the beating that he always does, they at least have a rotation of, of nine to ten guys who play decent minutes in every game. It should be an advantage to them in this co- compressed format of a Mountain West tournament of three games in three days. Now, Utah State will absolutely be up for this game. Everyone is when they face San Diego State. But it'll be an interesting matchup, to be sure. Jaden Ledee, great Osibor, both oh, players of the year in the conference. That Their their battles of this year have been outstanding. I mean, just outstanding. This is good. This is good high drama. And, and we'll see how... Uh, you know, how the officiating comes into play. Yesterday was one of the very rare games this season that San Diego State was able to win despite the fact they went to the foul line quite a bit less, I believe, than New Me- uh, than well, in the end it was uh it was twenty six to twenty nine. There was a discrepancy early on though. It was like a UNLV went to the foul line like sixteen times and San Diego State had only been twice. Yep early in the game, but then they had to foul at the end a couple of times, and it evened out. But San Diego State only made 16 of the 26. you got to shoot better than that. Yep. They shot 26% from three-point range. You'd like to see better than that. That was with a good second half uh, from three-point range. Got to get those shooters going. Got to figure out what's been going on with uh, with Waters and with Parrish. Uh, get them some confidence going into the NCAA tournament. Whether or not you win the Mountain West tournament, you want to build confidence going into next week and a game on either Thursday or Friday in the first round. What do you think Dutch's message is? Is it, The message has to be from him, just keep shooting, right? Just keep shooting. You're a good shooter, keep shooting. But if you're going to do it, this is the game to do it. Yeah, like like you're a five seed going against one, and I know you throw the seeds out the window, but winning the Mountain West tournament is not of utmost importance to you. You'd like to do it. This is a really good time if you're Brian Dutcher to say – yeah, Jaden's going to get his. He's always going to get his. He'll make his right. happen. Shoot, Reese. I, um, Shoot, uh, uh, Micah. Those guys, like, th- today's the day. Like, keep shooting. Going, this could conference. stun you. Basketball Ben agrees with Woods 100%. More like basketball it, it, Woods, In actually. that you don't want Jaden Ledee to be absolutely beaten up by, you know, he had 34 and 16 yesterday. Beastly I wouldn't day. mind if he's a little more of a decoy today. No doubt. Try to get your shooters going, and if you lose, you lose. You lose. It's not the but, end of the world. But get Jaden healthy. Get him a week off until, you know, you play next Thursday or Friday. This He'll be the out game. there. He'll obviously be out there, but you don't need him hacked by triple coverage. All night. 20 times in this game. You got killed yesterday. See if you Again. can get yeah, see if you can get some of the shooters going. And if they brick it out and you lose, guess what? So what? You get to go to the NCAA tournament anyway cuz you put together a resume that absolutely deserves it. So, basketball Ben actually nodding and says Woods made just a really great point right there about a potential strategy. Now, what Dutch's message last night was, "Hey, we may have had struggles in these close games this season, and we've lost in overtime, and we've lost heartbreakers. Doesn't matter now. This is the time. when If you're going to start winning close games, good time to start winning one. You just got one last night. We're going to have to get a few more like that. So build some confidence based on a close win I think, over UNLV. And I think, you know, he said, like you said, just get it, winning a close game. Is is a huge, huge. It has to be a huge boost. Like you know, had the Potteries been able, it had to been a while. Scratch yeah. one out last year. Yeah. It could have changed. It all felt like it. We just need one or two to turn one it or around. Two to turn this thing. Well, around. They got one yesterday. And again, you're right, man. And the fact that they were down early in overtime, and it looked like, oh, they're about to put their foot on the big. throat, and it was huge. It yeah. was a huge, huge. Uh, you have to tip your hat that to that battle and, and coming away with that win yesterday. So today's the day you can get some guys going. Like you said, decoy. I mean, if the Bulls can do it with Michael Jordan and John Paxson and Steve Kerr are hitting the biggest shots of their life, some of these guys can make buckets, okay? They're all going to be king on Jaden Ledee for very good reason. But this is the day that you tell those guys, get hot. Go get hot today. All right, Annie and Elston coming up next. Before we get out of here on a Friday, things Ben likes. I like good juicy sweet strawberries. I like a good marching band. I like a good thin pancake. I like a Nickelback song or two. Chicken pizza. 
I really like those seats. They're- I like a midnight buffet. <laughs> no I kind of like the smell of soft scrub. I like more of a small derriere. Okay. I like cake. I like it, Sheeran. I like no. both a hamburger and a cheeseburger. cheeseburger. I like clocks. I like how I've kind of set up my life. I like grasshopper pie. And- oh, no, I like it creamy. I like good, firm banana. I like just looking out at the sea. I like eating. I like moist. I like curry. I like big butts. I like fried Brussels sprouts. I like more of a firm filling. I like corn. I like Nordstrom. I do like musicals. And I like pepperoni. I like nice hotels. I like Nick getting a start today. I like nuts. I like Steph Curry. I like that song. I like Squirt. I like Saki. I like San Diego State. I like uh, Straight Up, Paula Abdul. I like the beef and broccoli. I like to mix it up. I like science experiments. I like that song. I like the crispiness of the waffle. I really like cheese. I like the little lunch meat. I like very straight lines. I like cannelloni. I like a well-crafted headline. I like brown sugar. I like maps. I'll say I like Justin Turner. I like going to golf games. I like diving into chores. I like sugar. I do like Butterfinger. I like blue and silver and not bad colors. I like the time change. I like Major League Baseball's new rule. I like the radio. I like geography. I like the knuckle method. I like Skippy. Oh. I mean, I like pie. And I like Bob Melvin. I really do. I like Jace Tingler, too. I like this day. I like being right. I still do like movie scores. I like good food. I like maps. I like when interviews can turn into organic conversation. I do like a Sofer's French bread pizza. I like having the wind go through my hair. (laughs) I think I like shows that the characters have an arc. I like the full lettuce, tomato, onion experience as well. I like those kind of burgers. I like the big overflowing bag of fries. I like those little Smarties rolls. I liked what I saw from Seth Lugo. I liked his competitive fire. I like walking around between the different lands. Steve Kerr, though, I like that. I like living on the coast. I like watching Tiger still. I like the idea of that matchup. I liked what I saw in the preseason. I like the aloneness sometimes. We're running out of time on the likes now. In yeah. fact, uh, we heard a few of the entrants in the tournament of drops there. How about... A tournament of things that Ben likes someday. Ooh, we do like a 256 I, I, you know drop what, field. I like that you idea. You like that idea? Uh, Woods is already off to oral surgery, so that's it for us. Annie and Elston coming up next for Paul Rindle. For Stephen Woods, have a great weekend, everybody. See you Monday morning on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. So long.